Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mercy Kill, and may the fourth be with you. I'm Sky Mills, your host, and I'm here with Covert Muffin in episode 46, Star Wars Games. Before we get started here, a few words from GDQ, as always. SGDQ 2022 remote volunteer applications are coming up. If you'd like to help with any of our off-site volunteering positions, go to gamesdonequick.com for more information. Registration is also open until May 23rd. Be be sure to register if you'll be attending our live event in Minnesota. The games list is out, so stay tuned for the schedule coming out this weekend on GamesDoneQuick.com. <coughs> and one of my favorites, Friend Fatal, will be having its next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatal, in late August. Game and volunteer submissions open May 9th, and go to GamesDoneQuick.com slash Frame Fatal for more information. With that being said, Muffin, I feel like we're having deja vu from 2021. It is wonderful to be here with you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, uh, last time on Mercy Kill, I had some of the most fun I had, like, ever performing a video game. Like, not being allowed to practice leading up to these just adds such a unique twist to the entire, like, formula. I'm usually somebody who over-prepares for marathon and, like, event uh, runs in, in particular. And so this is, like, the complete inverse of a uh, situation that I find myself in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so to keep things going with the Deja Vu theme here, Covert Muffin is actually running the same yes. three games in the same three categories from last year, and I am super excited. Now, as a recap, Covert did make it past the timer in the first two games, but could not quite <laughs> escape from Yavin 4. So we're hoping <laughs> this year is a little bit more different, especially now to remind the folks... Cover Muffin, are you a Jedi or a Sith? Oh, I'm a Sith, hands down. Oh, no. uh-oh. Don't make yeah. me turn this thing on. <laughs> Don't make me turn this thing on. Run Under's taking a break this week. We have uh, Luke Skywalker's... Um, uh, lightsaber Ooh. here, but I don't want to turn it on because that's a little bit of a safety hazard. You all know how <laughs> lightsabers can be. So, <laughs> so yes, we are on opposite sides of the force, but that's okay. That's okay. Under the name of GDQ and GDQ Hotfix, I think we can get along and get some good speed run again. So a little bit of a recap. Cover Bobbin, how did you get into running Star Wars games and maybe individually here, each of these ones? Yeah, great question. So the runs that we're going to be showcasing off today is uh, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcasts, uh, followed by Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, which are an anthology order, the final two games of the anthology for the Jedi Knight series, and then Escape from Yavin 4, which is a fan-made mod um, that is a fully functional standalone game uh, that uses the JKA and same setup with the engine. How I got started was a long time ago, people were just like, why aren't you speed running? I just have always liked diving into games, like fooling around with mechanics, finding out glitches and stuff like that, as well as practicing more than I actually end up like playing the game normally. So uh, after a bunch of enough friends asked me, I had loved Jedi Knight Academy as a childhood game, having done over a hundred casual playthroughs, just playing it normally. Uh, and so I decided to just look up a YouTube tutorial by Sajiki. And uh, the first day I was streaming it, about nine of the community members just came into my stream and were laughing along with me as I was uh, learning the ropes. And I haven't turned back since. Wow, that is a very supportive community. Yeah, they're and awesome. And a great story. So how long have you been running these games? Like on and off. Great question. Game. Yeah, for sure. So Academy and Outcast combined have slightly over 4,000 hours combined into the games across a seven year period. I started speedrunning in September of 2015. Uh, and then the first time I submitted to GDQ, Jedi Knight Academy ended up getting accepted. So it was ever since really then. And then Escape from Yavin 4 is my least run game. Uh, because it's kind of a like a newer project over the past few years. Uh, a runner whose screen name is Hotshot Wire, as well as uh, some cont contributions from Dr. Meowington and myself, really routed out that game in particular. And it turned out to be an absolutely incredible speed game, uh, which is probably the one I'm most worried for. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, any safety strats going in? Anything you oh, yeah. may have learned from last year that you may apply to this year? 
Yeah, you know, we were talking about this right before we went live. Uh, my hands are going to be shaking for the first like maybe 20 minutes or so. And so it's going to be important that I try and slow down and get through an area. The nice thing about these games is that there's a quick save and quick load system. So my time losses will only be about like five to 10 seconds each time I take a death unintentionally or something like that. However, there are situations that I can get into where I will have to restart the level, or uh, there's some instabilities in some of, some of the games, so I have safety saves prepared for those, like I would do in a marathon setting. But yeah, no, safety strats, I'm not going to be going for some of the more optimal things that I would do uh, if I were going for a PB attempt. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad, too. Although every now and then we may get to be what I call a covert muffin special where Muffin just sits there <laughs> saying, all right, I'm going to go for this. I don't care about the risk. Let's just go for it. And I love that about Muffin. Muffin is Heck not yeah. afraid to take chances. No, I just I love those. <laughs> all right. So are you ready to go? We have three sure. wonderful games to get through. And I believe Jedi Knight 2 is first. Yeah, indeed. So just a little bit about all three of these games. They're all based around a modified Quake 3 engine uh, where there is strafe jumping. So you're going to see the camera moving around a lot just like this, and that is going to be in order to build me speed. And then I can just buffer jump inputs to jump repeatedly and build like hundreds, if not thousands of units per second in order to be able to really break apart these games. So with that being said, we are good to go to get started. And all right. We just load into the first level and I will say when to start. So starting in three, two, one, go. Good luck and have fun. You got this. Yo, thank you. OK, so first off here, that pistol shot there is incredibly important. Uh, but here I'm just building a bunch of speed to be able to jump around here. And then here is the first sequence break of the game itself, where I'm going to crouch and try and get into this tiny little hole. There we go, third try, uh, which is going to actually sequence break about two thirds of the mission itself. So the reason why that pistol shot at the star is incredibly important is that we do have a companion Jan that's going to be following us uh, through the mission. And so if I hadn't done that pistol shot, there's an Imperial officer with a really high accuracy rate. Uh, which can be very, very scary. Uh, but here is going to be a switch puzzle. Oh, and then two, three, two. And then one, two, one. And then hit the panels. All right, I didn't mess up the code. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right, good start. <laughs> yeah, not bad. All right, so coming into here, this is going to be Ketchum Base, which is really going to showcase off like what Outcast is as a speed game compared to the others, um, where just uh, very tight, narrow hallways, lots of enemies, and uh, very difficult jump there that I got first try. Very nice. And so it's going to be important that I try and maintain my speed as I'm uh, going through. The nice thing about the enemy's AI in general as, oh no, I'm getting absolutely trolled by that droid. Okay, thank goodness. Uh, is that, um, oh boy, there we go. Okay, that was a little bit of a scary thing. If I had fallen down in there, I would have taken some damage. But enemies, uh, the AI for their triggers themselves actually take roughly half of a second before they are active. So after I cross the initial first aggro trigger of the enemies, it takes them about half a second before they end up respawning. So if I am super well practiced and, and super go-to at these games, I can get through most of these sections and mitigate RNG. But here's going to be a quick save and quick load where I tried to get underneath that trip mine wire but did not do it so I'll just back off and destroy the trip mine myself but using quick save and quick load there ended up skipping dialogue and so skipping dialogue can oftentimes cause like these quick quick uh, events and like cutscenes and stuff for uh, starting so as long as I am aware of what triggers and such are going on as I do a reverse door crouchy for a little bit of swag uh, then I can uh, end up being able to use that to be able to save time. Uh, but here uh, we are going to be using this mouse droid. Very interesting. We are not we cannot actually physically use the A and D keys, which are known as the strafe or sidestep keys uh, with the droid. So if I messed up my routing there for that droid, I would have had to like back up awkwardly, move the camera over and then reposition for it. But upcoming here, we are going to be heading into Artist Mine, which can be probably one of the first majorly scary levels for a rusty player like myself. I'm going to be trying to move, be moving through this area at a really uh, fast pace. Uh, but we're going to come over here to grab this bowcaster, which uh, does not actually lose us any time, just simply because 
uh, we are on a global cycle, but oh, I got it first try. Okay, that is a really easy uh, jump chain to end up messing up. But here we're grabbing these back to canisters, which are going to be uh, 25 health healing uh, med kits basically as I go through. Uh, but here, if I am on a good enough cycle, I can sneak in, grab these trip mines and get up. All right, it all comes down to this. I got up, all right. <laughs> Oh boy, okay. So this shuttle here is moving the moment you start the mission. So if you are just a little bit too slow with moving through, um, then that shuttle, it, then you have to wait like 20 seconds or so for another shuttle to be able to, to get through. Um, then in here in these cave bugs, we're going to try and stay towards the middle of these tunnels because everything that's like really bright green will actually box me out in my movement. And there I ended up crouching over that cave bug to be able to maintain my speed and be able to get through the tunnels. Okay, all right, so far so good, honestly. Like, um, this is definitely like a slow pace for me, but we have gone through a lot of really, really difficult things. Uh, here there's a really fast sort of elevator climb that will allow you to save a cycle on this elevator by just doing a really difficult jump chain to get up to it. I am not going to go for that because I am not confident in my ability to make it. Because if you just miss it once, that ends up not saving time. Then here we have a list of enemies that we need to kill off. Uh, and I definitely missed some. That's okay. Oh, wow. I missed a few. Roar! Okay. So there, after killing off the enemies, it will allow me to uh, move into this next section. And here I'm going to do a really precise trick where I'm going to be going up to this wall, quick saving, quick loading, uh, because the movement nice after quick loading is uh, really weird. I might go into details about that a little bit later. And that's going to allow me to skip an elevator uh, that has some difficult movement to get to uh, and is going to allow me to get through. So even though I, I got that uh, third try, that still ended up saving time. Cool, okay. So next, after activating that switch, we're going to drop down here. And this is this level is like one of the main reasons we want to get the bowcaster. So here, just shooting the stormtroopers that are going to end up getting in my way. Uh, there's a bowcaster right here over to my left that I can now skip because I got it on a previous level. Because between missions, uh, your inventory actually transfers through, including like health and armor, as well as the weapons you accumulate. There are some missions that do actually end up resetting your health, uh, but in Outcast, it's kind of one of the cool features where you do have to be careful about your health management going through, right? Uh, so as a runner here today, I absolutely am going over grabbing some safety health, right? Just to make sure that I can keep my health on a high number as I continue into these missions. But these stairs here, um, I'm actually attempting to jump at a really specific rhythm. That one was pretty good. Because uh, the faster I'm moving, the, the shorter of a time period I have before I run into the stairs and lose all of my speed. Okay, didn't do quite a great job. That's totally okay. Here, I'm going to drop a trip mine on the ground because enemies actually end up moving around during cutscenes. So even though I skipped the cutscene, instead of like skipping forward to a time period, it will actually accelerate through that time period in in-game time, right? So you see the timer, 143, 144, 145, right? So that is still always going on. So uh, I can't move around during cutscenes unless I enter it myself, but enemies absolutely can. Okay, so coming over there, there's some safety health if I need it, but we've been doing a pretty good job. And here's a really tight jump chain. Oh, wow, I got it. Oh my goodness, that is one of the harder jump chains for me in the early game itself. So I'm like all the things that are really terrifying to me, I've been getting like either first or third try. Okay, so here I actually don't remember the roll spot and setup to do a really fast strat, so I am going to opt to do an old strat for a little bit of safety. Okay. Okay. So here, coming into this next section, we are going to just have some other nice mine movement. Um, hopefully, I don't pick a wrong direction on the mines. Uh, it is pretty linear to get through here. However, there are, if I do take a wrong turn somewhere, uh, it will just bring me out in, in, in like a circuitous loop. Um, but really, the goal is just to end up getting around this cave bugs very nicely done. And these cave bugs are like always in the same position uh, every single time for starting. They always run in the same uh, area. And that's one nice thing about the Jedi Knight games in general is that the RNG really isn't too much of a factor until we get to a game as spooky and scary as Escape from Yavin 4.
Uh, this. This. Okay, so here I'm just killing off a specific list of enemies. Um, and then we'll do this. And then doing a dialogue skip there by quick saving and quick loading is going to allow me to get in here. And then I am going to use one of uh, my, my health heals right there because my health is not going to refresh going into the next mission. But here we are now going to be babysitting this Imperial officer, which is an auto scroller in the game. Uh, there's no real way to speed this up because the officer has a finite amount of health. There is one part where I am going to intentionally go for a damage boost on the Imperial officer, but I have to wait until he ends up getting to a checkpoint. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and become invisible by crouching so that Stormtrooper just will not see me. And then once the officer gets past this second lamp here as this guy is trolling me a little bit, I'm going to come out, stand up for a brief moment and start crouching again to lure the first two Stormtroopers but have the back to uh, stay where they are, right? You can see that the, those Stormtroopers can't see me so they didn't end up aggroing onto me. Then when the, storm, the Imperial officer gets high enough, I'll do another shot to be able to aggro the stormtroopers so that they will run by without actually getting in the officer's way. Then here we're going to quick save and quick load to skip dialogue to open this door a little bit faster. And I just watched that back cave bug there to see if it moved immediately or if it waited for a little bit. There is a bit of RNG with that, but not for any time loss. And then just without even looking at the cave bug, I know how long it takes to get there before exploding it. But then here, the Imperial officer is going to round this corner here and then do a cool little soccer trick. And yeah, that's good. Wow, and that's really good, okay. So giving the Imperial officer a bit of a butt boost ended up causing them to go into the final checkpoint as, wow, I just nailed a really difficult continuation there, um, which caused them to stand up a little bit quicker. If I hadn't done that, then the officer would have uh, stood up a little bit slower. But here I'm going to go for old school strats just because once again, I am uh, very, very rusty in this game. But here uh, we are going to take out a list of stormtroopers and hopefully this guy doesn't not shoot me with any more rockets. Don't do it. Okay, we're good, we're good. And so I cleared the first line of stormtroopers in order to give uh, the, the next line time to move into place because they spawn immediately after I kill uh, a previous stormtrooper in that conga line. However, um, they do take some time to be able to uh, get into place. Uh, but that was really good. And so now with that ATST in particular destroyed, we are going to be heading into the next section of the mission. So jumping past this ATSC here, which we'll kill a little bit later on, we're going in to go to go into one of the harder jump chains of the run for me. Okay, I messed up, so I'll go for a backup chain. Okay, save there for safety. Yeah, okay, so my movement there was really not great at all, but that's totally okay. I got through without falling down, and that is the most important thing. Then destroying that ATSC uh, to give myself a little bit oh, of... Uh, time on the way back we are now going to be jumping down and killing this imperial officer which is going to roar at me because french is the best in this game and then grabbing the safety out for a little bit of safety i do want to maintain my health and make sure that it's low but man wow i'm moving a lot better than i expected i i would today we're definitely able to get through a lot of these uh oh well oh, i take it back but that's why we quick save there <laughs> um but here, just killing off some stormtroopers so that they don't snipe me as I'm coming back through. As we have to come back over here, destroy two anti-air cannons. This one takes 13 shots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Nope. Yeah, some of the shots must have missed. That's okay, that's okay. Uh, before heading on to the end of the mission. And then doing a really tricky jump chain here. I'm going to be jumping around and getting slightly boxed there by the stormtroopers. So here I have 55 health, so I'm going to run into a trip mine there after the game allows it to explode and then oh no disarm and oh we're dead but that's the actual trigger to end the mission <laughs> uh so there is the quaking lizard uh disan who ends up uh killing our waifu oh no and so because of this we are going to go back to luke skywalker and get our lightsaber back because after the end of jedi knight dark forces 2 we ended up forsaking all of our force powers and uh turning away from the force because we were tempted by the dark side 
So coming into here, what we're going to do is enter this cutscene and then refresh our graphic settings. By refreshing our graphic settings, what it's going to do is allow us to enter this cutscene, which you'll see when the game window ends up coming up. And this is going to save us a little bit of time. Uh, you couldn't quite see it because of the capture that I have to use for this performance. But um, I ended up uh, just not having to travel nearly as far as I would have if I hadn't entered the cutscene. Oh boy. Okay, who I remember to do that. So there I just changed a setting to change the SVFPS to be able to do a little bit e of an easier, slower, but easier variation for one of the biggest run killer skips, which is uh, known as lightsaber skip. And so lightsaber skip is kind of like the big high trick, which I would start being like, oh my goodness, like this is the most difficult trick in like a marathon setting. Uh, it is very difficult, but as somebody who has done it hundreds and hundreds of times, it shouldn't probably take me more than 10 attempts, I imagine. But basically, um, I am going to cut out about a minute and a half of this level, uh, skip grabbing the force jump power as we get force speed here. And that is going to allow me to uh, get to the end of the level because it, the game like teases you uh, with your lightsaber. Uh, it's like, oh, look, your lightsaber, and then it raises out of reach. However, if I end up using four speeds to slow down time and move a little bit faster, that was close. Oops, I did not four speed there. Okay. And get into a spot and push this peg. I'm going to try and get on an incredibly thin line of pixels. There we go. Wow, that was really, really good. And then by doing this, I'm going to, whoops, I uh, just slowly walk away from this ledge here. Yep, there we go. And because the cage is actually not connected to uh, the pillar itself, I can end up getting my lightsaber and then sneaking out. So uh, instead of having to go around and grab force jump in order to uh, progress to the end of the mission and then do another puzzle to get the lightsaber, I can end up just uh, doing that one trick there. So that was great. That was really, really good. And so now uh, we're undercover here coming into Narshada streets. Uh, which is probably one of my, my favorite IL levels. And then doing some more dialogue skips, we're going to come into this cutscene. So here we have our force powers disabled, but entering this cutscene is going to allow me to get my force powers back. And normally if you just skip the cutscene, what it'll end up doing is locking the door and uh, cause you to have to like fight off a bunch of enemies and then hit a switch. But just entering this cutscene, it gives us our force powers back and allows us uh, to be able to go out the front door. Uh, so with this here is a tricky jump. Okay, great, got that. And then we are going to be coming through here. Okay, there we go, nice red lightsaber. Because being a Sith is really cool. All right. And then hitting the switch here and then jumping up. I am going to go for an IL strat which I should not do. I'll do like three attempts of this. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's one of the hardest jump chains in the game. I got that like third try. Oh, that's so funny, dude. I wow. swear I have not played this game in like over half a year. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, and I got the hilt kill on the enemy because for some reason hilt end up dealing damage. I'm turning like bright red because I'm sure this was like, wait, no, Muffin's totally just popping off and this is like totally a like a PB attempt or something. It's not. I, I, I swear to all goodness, it's not. <laughs> okay, so here actually throwing my lightsaber uh, through this light here and then moving over is going to allow us to sequence break actually a large portion of the level. Uh, then coming into here, we are going to be introduced to our friendly neighborhood Lando, who uh, is going to let us know that uh, they were imprisoned by this gangster and uh, he would help us track down information about Dasan, who is the person who supposedly killed our waifu. Okay, there, I missed that sequence break, so we'll go for a backup. Almost, just missed the jump cancel. Beautiful, okay. Okay, so there I'm gonna wait for a bit of dialogue and then quick saving, quick loading to skip that to cause the door to open up a little bit faster. And then coming down this elevator, I'm gonna throw my lightsaber in order to be able to get a Wookiee Bowcaster. Uh, because upcoming into this next arena, this is actually going to be a really cool sequence break that a runner whose screen name is Sajiki ended up discovering. So here I'm going to enter this cutscene and I just might not get this because it's it's very, very tight. So here activating force speed to slow down time. Yeah, my hands are still shaking. 
Okay. Each of these turrets uh, is actually stationary. Normally they're just moving around and the like. Okay, great. We have one TDU left over. So here for a little bit of safety, I'm going to kill those in order to be able to grab a sniper rifle, hopefully. But if I am fast enough here, I can end up hitting this switch and then, oh no. Okay, yeah, I missed that, I missed that. That's okay, that's okay. And I missed the sniper rifle, okay. That's unfortunate, uh, but that's that's okay, that's okay. I do have backup strats to be uh, ready to bust out. But there, we just picked up our first Seeker drone, which is going to be one of the coolest uh, bits of uh, tech that we'll be showing off later. But I apologize, the sequence break that Sajiki ended up discovering is that the end of the cutscene there ends up teleporting us to where we need to go. So if I can get to that switch, open up the elevator before the cutscene ends, I have an easier arena, and then I get teleported at the end uh, to uh, save some time. But here, we are going to knock over this enemy onto the ground and then kill it in order to get the thermal detonators as a drop. For whatever reason, that enemy in particular drops invisible thermal detonators that can just fall through the floor of the level itself. So, but by pushing them over, it makes it so we can get the thermal detonators guaranteed. Uh, but here, if you're wondering why I'm playing on French, it's not for time save, it's for this. Because <laughs> French Lando is best Lando. <laughs> then just sticking my lightsaber into the wall ends up just skipping a bunch of dialogue, allows me to get through there a little bit quicker. Um, but here on this level, uh, we are going to be going for another uh, sequence break. I'm just going to do this for a little bit of safety. And okay, we got through. Oh, actually, you know what? Actually, uh, I'm going to go for a little bit of safety here. I'm going to go for a little safety. Uh, here, I'm going to come over here to a secret area in order to get a number of additional secret drones, just in case I goof and mess up. Uh, literally just for a little bit of event safety. Okay, and now I'm going to turn my lightsaber off and then save the game. Um, so here, as Lando is talking, we are going to be coming into our next trick, which is known as Lock Fando, because uh, we would never switch around any consonants whatsoever. Then, uh, coming through here, uh, by jumping on top of the ship, I ended up skipping a trigger for a, a specific zone. And by doing this, it's going to allow me to end up causing all of those enemies Oh, 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 okay. Okay, nice. Did I kill all of them? It did, it did. Okay. So we got really good RNG there with Lando coming over to the right. Um, and by uh, just staying out of that second trigger, as well as another zone in particular, it allowed me to be able to uh, cause all of them to spawn in the same area. If I hadn't have done that, what would have ended up happening is... All oh, I can get a sniper rifle here. Oh, great, great, great. Okay. Um... And then they would have spawned on either side of the hangar. And spawning on either side of the hangar every single wave. Uh oh. What are you doing in here? I don't I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, that is a problem. Just just for a little safety, I'm gonna I'm gonna take him out. Um so yeah, so Luck Fando is a really, really nice uh way to save a chunk of time. Then coming through here, we are just uh opening up these doors here. Uh, which is going to allow us uh, to refuel. And here is the code, which I completely remember. I swear to goodness, I have not forgotten this. I think it's three and two. It is. Okay, beyond way. So that means good job or good or something like that. Sorry, I'm not fluent in French. I just like how Lando sounds. <laughs> And then some more uh, dialogue skip. Here is the gangster that has the information about Dasan. Uh, and tell us where his waifu de is, where my waifu is, but oh no, we just ended up killing him. Uh, so hopefully that information about Dasan was not terribly important. Okay, great. And uh, that is the next level done. How are we doing uh, so far? How much time do I have out of curiosity? Let's see, we have an estimate of 53 minutes right now, yeah. and counting up, I'm currently coming on uh, 23 minutes right now in to the run. Great, okay. I have no idea how that is on pace. <laughs> so probably, probably about a half hour left there. Great, yeah. okay. Fantastic. Um, up here, we are going to be jumping up, and then I am going to end up, oh, over here? Yeah, over here. 
uh, jumping to grab a Seeker Drone, uh, which is going to allow me to move through. And then here, just using Force Speed, it's going to allow me to come into here. And then there I ended up using Mind Trick to be able to open up this, oh no, uh, to try and open up that door. But I accidentally jumped onto the door itself, uh, which caused the door to not allow, uh, to, to cause it to stop opening and go down. But here, uh, the entire reason for doing that is that this is like a kill room and it's on a global timer when I start the mission itself. Um, but here, now for safety, uh, we are going to use this sniper rifle to shoot down these guys, and then I'm gonna heal up some shields here. And then I'm going to jump across this elevator. So here we could end up using the Seeker drones to be able to skip uh, these elevator cycles here, but I am not gonna go for that skip because it is one of the longest and most difficult Seeker drone skips. And we will definitely show off Seeker drone skips a little bit later on, uh, but just for the sake of bringing down my average, I am not gonna go for that trick. Okay. So here I do have to be a little bit careful on my positioning onto this elevator. Uh, if I am standing in a bad spot, I will end up just like instantly dying to being crushed uh, by this thing here, which is interesting. Then we're going to pull out thermal detonators, push this guy over, and then come through here and kill all those guys with a single thermal detonator and then grab all of this safety health. Awesome. So upcoming here is one of the very, very few uh, portions of RNG in the run itself, uh, which is going to be this wind room here. So here I'm going to quick save at a specific time because sometimes, the, oh, they act, they're active. Yeah, they're active, they're active. Oh, I fell to my death. There we go, there we go, okay. Uh, so whenever I hit that invisible trigger in that tunnel as I'm coming up, it spawns each of these currents, these upward air currents, which pops me up, but it's completely random, the order and uh, the timing of the currents themselves. But after they spawn initially, uh, they will end up being consistent with their timing, and it looks like I got the worst possible RNG. Uh, so that's pretty funny, but that's okay, that's okay. Then next coming up here, uh, it's important I landed on that platform. If I don't, then this cutscene actually does not trigger. But here's the first lightsaber on lightsaber combat in the game, which has probably one of the most complex and best melee combat systems in the game, but... Oh! Uh, yeah, we just ended up using thermal detonators instead. <laughs> uh, then using force push there, we're going to cock another thermal detonator, which is this grenade here to destroy those guys, grabbing some safety ones from their corpse, and then using another thermal detonator to be able to kill another lightsaber foe. Uh, so it's very funny that there's supposed to be these like epic Empire Strikes Back, Bespin sort of lightsaber fights, right? That was the, the place where Han Solo ended up uh, getting frozen. Uh, but you, we just throw a single thermal detonator, opens the door for us. <laughs> So here, this droid is very, very slow, so I'm going to bully him a little bit and then jumping past those trip mines in order to not die from instant death and grabbing some safety health and armor. So this droid, we're going to have to babysit through another tunnel here, uh, but for pushing him at really specific points in time is going to allow me to get the droid to open up these switches a little bit quicker. Then here, I totally forgot. I think it's left. Yeah, it is left. Right. Oh, this one's left as well. Okay, the droid's low on health. Okay, there we go. There we go. And then one more. Uh, two more pushes. One, two. Fantastic. And that is going to open the door for us a little bit faster. So it's supposed to be this like really dramatic escort mission, but up here is going to be a really cool trick. Going to set up a safety save. So here, uh, right before the door, is going to be a trigger to start... Uh, I don't like that, so we're going to reset up to cause this enemy to start moving after a fixed amount of time. Okay, that's much better, but jumping on him, nice first try, um, and then pulling him up into the air will allow me to jump even higher than I'm, whoops, uh, supposed to be allowed to. Uh, so here, utilizing force jump, it allows me to jump for higher and jump for a little bit longer. But over here is going to be our first of many Seeker Drone skips by jumping up and then spawning a Seeker Drone directly underneath me. It is going to be moving in a counterclockwise fashion always. 
And doing that allows me to sequence break like the majority of the mission and then falling back down into this elevator to cause some enemies to actually spawn in order for uh, this enemy here, uh, which has the key that opens up the end of the mission. So if I hadn't jumped back down, I would not have been able to exit this mission. <laughs> So they're just uh, using the heavy repeater. I'm going to destroy these trip mines here so that I have a bit of an easier return trip. And then jumping up and over, uh, we are going to grab this security key here in order to progress with the mission. Uh, so lightsaber combat in this game really came down to the boss fights in general, as well as a few enemies in the game itself. Um, and before I started speedrunning this game, uh, I had done a lot of the, the lightsaber uh, tech and routing in the in Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. And so the runners of this game asked me to end up uh, looking at, as I make sure I grab that weapon, uh, looking at this boss here, because uh, Tavion, which is going to be sort of Dasan's apprentice, was a major run killer. Uh, for people in general, right before I start running. So we found out that after lightsaber skip, we were allowed to switch to the blue style. And with blue style, uh, what we can do is just jump on Tavion's head to knock her prone, roll, and then kill her as she's standing back up with a backwards kill maneuver. <laughs> and that is known as the God Slayer. I have to know, how do you not get lost in this game? Everything looks the same to me after a while. And all I could think is I'd be going backwards and in circles and every which way. Yeah, you know, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast in particular is well known to be a very, very large game. Like we'll see that um, Academy, which is going to be coming up after this game, is going to be a lot more linear of a speed game itself. Uh, but just like simply like as speedrunners, right, we just remember exactly where to go when we need to. Okay, so there I can't actually hit that switch uh, as fast as I can because it ends up uh, causing uh, the switch to uh, not actually activate. But here, major shout outs to a speedrunner whose screen name is Hotshot Wire, who found uh, that skip there by pushing an enemy in front of that door, which causes it to unlock for us and open, uh, which uh, I have dubbed uh, Shia LaBeouf skip. <laughs> because there's an NPC that like chases you around that I just uh, jokingly named uh, Shia LaBeouf. Okay. Uh, so here, coming into this hallway is going to be one of the most difficult secret drone skips in the entire run, uh, which is going to be here, and we got it first try. Very, very nice. Uh, then upcoming here, sorry, there's just so much to explain. Um, major shout out to a speedrunner whose screen name is N Ryan. We found out, like looking down here, I will die if I fall that distance. But simply by firing the flechette there uh, underneath me, it ends up mitigating the grand majority of that fall damage, allowing me to take a very, very easy cycle which used to be one of the most difficult cycles in the run itself and turning it into one of the easiest with zero time loss whatsoever. Very, very cool. And there was a really tricky crouch climb. Uh, crouching and ooh, ouch. Um, crouching uh, allows me to shrink my hitbox as well as causing me to raise it ever so slightly higher. So there are going to be these distances that are just barely out of reach, just a little bit too high. Uh, but just simply by uh, crouching, it allows me to end up um, getting over them uh, and instead of having to jump to a slightly higher ground. But here is going to be another pull jump in order to build some of that additional height. And then here is a very, very precise jump. So I'm going to try and line up for it. Okay, that was a little bit too soon on the jump input. That was a little too soon. Okay, there we go. There we go. Uh, and that, def that definitely did not save me any time whatsoever uh, because it took me a few additional tries. Oh, the, the lightning's not off. Okay, I think I have to hit this switch as well. I remember how to play these games, I swear. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, that's a weird glitch. I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, and then here, coming through this area here, we're going to push this guy over and then die to these trip mines. I'm trying to jump and crouch through the lasers to look really, really cool. So instead, I'm just going to take a little bit of an easier and slightly slower route, which is going to be rolling through them instead. Okay, so something that is a little bit spooky here is that I'm starting to get a little low on 
Energy buff. Oh, yep. Okay, so this guy is also Shia LaBeouf. Because he can jump really high, I wish I could jump that high. Uh, and he can absolutely troll us. But here, this door here is, if I can move fast enough, I can get back through it uh, before it closes. But here, I'm going to grab some safety health, which I would normally skip. And then we are going to uh, jump down here and roll in order to also mitigate some fall damage. Then coming into the section, I actually only need to kill off two enemies in order to open up the next door. So I'm going to jump forward first to stop them from jumping and then end up killing them while utilizing force speed. Then here, this is my rival. Oh, because he can troll me. Okay, okay, we got through. Um, ooh, uh, I do not want to go into the next mission with only 20 health. Ooh, okay, there's a laser there. We're fine, we're fine, okay. All right, we made it to the next mission. Uh, so this mission is going to be one of the cooler ones. Uh, it's going to have some of the most intense sequence breaks, that one being one of them just crouching through that tiny little hole by shrinking our hitbox allows us to sequence break the majority of this puzzle and section here. Then grabbing some safety health for a little bit of extra safety, we are going to be doing a crouch here and then a crouch here. And so I am in intentionally cutting my force jump short Ooh, as we take a little bit of damage there and crouching in order to uh, maintain my force. Because you'll notice in the bottom right hand portion as I try and do another difficult sequence break here, these pink things will kill me instantly if I if I touch them. They may look tasty, but they are not. Okay, and then doing two more difficult jumps there and then crouching through this hole. Great, okay. Uh, but it's not over yet. There's still two more really big sequence breaks to this level itself. Uh, the first one we are going to upcoming uh, to this next section as I try, oh, where am I? Uh, wait, where is this? Oh, I know where I am, I know where I am. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, the first one, we're going to slow down time by using four speed uh, in order to be able to catch a platform cycle and save a bit of time. Uh, so here, these paddles will also one-shot me if I end up touching them, irregardless of how much health I have. But very nicely done, we're able to get through there. Uh, so here, I'm just checking my force. Okay, it looks good. So jump, jump, and then jumping off that chicken robot there is going to allow me to jump off his head and crouch climb up to that platform, getting there in a nick of time. Uh, so doing that allows me to skip a, uh, a puzzle and pathing to be able to get to this part that normally you're supposed to go all the way down in this room here, all the way down, and then go all the way back up in order to be able to open a door and uh, there we go, in order to get out here. But instead, what I can do is end up using these Seeker drones to do another skip. And this one has six jumps that I need to do, six to eight jumps. We'll do a couple more for safety, and I just barely missed the crouch climb. That's fine, that's fine. Oops, okay. So the, the oh, got stuck in the wall. So the most difficult part of the Seeker drone skips is definitely the start. But as you can see, it is indeed this tiny little metal sphere. Uh, that is very difficult to continue to jump on. But there we go, I'll take that for sure. Taking a bit of fall damage, but that is totally a-okay. And that skips just over a minute. Just over a minute. Cool. All right. So upcoming here, uh, very funny thing. This is going to be one of the harder enemies to actually kill with a lightsaber. But if we just wait for him to jump and then force pulling him in the air, it causes him to go into like a uh, falling death animation, allowing us to effectively one-shot him, uh, drastically simplifying the fight and uh, making it a lot quicker as well. Then using the key we ended up stealing, we're going to go into another stealth uh, section of the mission, uh, which is going, oop, yeah, a little bit more dialogue, uh, which is going to be really, really tricky normally. So here, um, whoops, not force push. Uh, we're going to mind trick that that first stormtrooper there, mind trick that first stormtrooper there, and then quick save the game so I don't have to redo that. And then doing a jump chain to get up here, we are going to come over and mind trick that Imperial officer. And that Imperial officer is the linchpin of the operation. If any enemies see me, that Imperial officer starts moving. And if it ends up hitting a switch, it will instantly fail the mission, requiring me to start it from uh, the beginning of the mission. Yeah. But just mind tricking that officer for whatever reason, it doesn't matter what enemies end up seeing me, they just will not move, they will not act at all, unless that Imperial officer ends up dying. Uh, so that is a really cool usage of, of Mind Trick in the run. 
So I'm coming here. We've now infiltrated Dasan's ship. Uh, and using a bit of lightsaber tech, I'm able to kill that enemy a little bit quicker. And then killing another Imperial officer, which is going to be important. Uh, we are going to be jumping up here uh, in order to get a droid so that we can open up a switch. Then force pulling these droids. This is the other portion of RNG. That's fine. The second closest one uh, of the mission. So there are five droids there. When I activate the switch to take control of a droid, it selects one of the five at random. So force pulling two to three of them. I, of course, want it to end up being the one that I ended up force pulling. So it has to uh, walk a shorter distance. Um, so that was good. I mean, I got I got one that was uh, moving a OK. Fine. No problem. But then upcoming here is going to be a fun auto scroller section. Uh, so Sky, if there are actually any like questions in chat or if you have a question for me, this is a good time to, to ask it. You know, you had me checking my tabs for donations during a marathon. That's how much I've been <laughs> yeah. doing those in the past. Um, no, but we are coming on, oh my goodness, uh, what's it, 39, so 14 minutes left, yeah. All right. How are you feeling about that? Good. I'm feeling good. We are coming into like the very late game uh, of, of, the, uh, of the run itself, so that feels uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I actually have no idea how how long it normally takes me because it's been so long since I've run this game. Um, but yeah, it seems good. And I want to let folks know if they are watching on YouTube, remember, if you too would like to be a stealthy pastry, you can follow <laughs> Covert Muffin here at twitch.tv slash covert underscore muffin. Please be sure to go give Covert Muffin some love. Oh, this has you. been fantastic. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, so upcoming here is going to be a fun little puzzle. We need to kill this officer in order to open this up. And then we are going to do a switch puzzle. And so, um, goodness, I hope I do remember exactly what switches I'm supposed to press. Uh, so in this area, whenever you want to make a phone call coming out of this ship itself, you end up having to uh, press these very specific switches uh, and then go and activate a console up above. So I have no idea how the Imperials were expected to end up doing this uh, every single time. They must have like special uh, jetpacks or something that they can commission out. Uh, but here, I believe I do I did hit the three correct switches. Uh, so that was a very, very nice and thick codec. And then we are going to progress on. And because my force management was pretty good here, I can end up just jumping up immediately. And you'll notice that my force in the bottom right is very, very nearly depleted. If I run out of force, that's right. I can't utilize any of my force powers or force jump. And so I have to wait in order for it to regenerate. So as a seasoned speedrunner, like force management absolutely is a skill uh, and something that just adds on to the very complex and difficult movement that I have to do constantly in order to just initially go fast. But there we just ended up uh, calling Mon Mothma, who is going to, uh, just to let them know that uh, she has an incoming group of uh, Shadow Troopers and Imperial Army that are going to be uh, invading the Republic. All right, so here I'm going to press that. That is going to be important for later. Uh, but now we are coming into uh, Doom Detention, which is going to have a rocket trooper that's going to shoot me for the majority of my life. No problem. This is totally fine. I will go ahead and use a bit of a safety heal there and then open this door, open this door, save the game, save it again. Oh, and a shotgun trooper. Okay. And so now... Uh, we are going to do a trick known as Spaceman. So here, just crouching and moving at a diagonal is going to allow me to get on this, oh, get on this ledge and avoid the gravity field and then doing a very difficult jump. Oh no. Uh, um, hang on. Okay, I am definitely floundering here. So we're gonna go for this. Almost made it, okay. So I'm a little far forward from where I wanna be. Okay, that might work, nope, nope. Oh, huh. Uh, okay, and okay, made it over. It's not over yet. No, I have to restart the level. That is totally okay. That is totally okay. Okay, so that's going to make things a little tense uh, coming through this mission because I have to get back to that trick. Um, but there, I just ended up messing up my movement, so I ended up 
uh, not making the cycle. But the goal there is to end up uh, causing the door hanger to just be closing. And if I don't do this, then I end up getting pulled back out into the vacuum of space. Uh, so it's going to be incredibly important that I catch it on that cycle that I, that I want to be able to hit it. Okay? So I'm just gonna listen for the screams of the stormtroopers and here we go again. Okay? Nope. Okay. All right, so I apologize, I'm just focusing here. Nope. Okay, this trick is quite difficult. It is, I, I usually am able to, to get it pretty quickly. Oh man, what is my movement there that I normally do? Okay, crouch. Okay. This is okay. Nope. Okay, again. Slowly okay. Oh, shoot. Okay, so the goal once again is to be able to not hit that gravity field and be able to move through. So let's just try setting up another quick save here. Okay, nope. Okay, I'm not getting en enough speed on my first jump, so let's try moving like this. Okay, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay. Okay. Oh, shoot, that was so close. All right. Okay. Oh, God, so close. Oh no, dude. Oh no, Spaceman gonna be the end of me. <laughs> oh no. I'm um, Muffin. Okay. Um, all right, we have to go again. Uh, that's okay, that's okay. That's totally fine. If, th if this is what causes me to get Mercy killed, so be it. But I am going to hit the skip. One million percent. I am not giving up that easily. All right, I believe. Okay. So pushing this guy over in order to get a rocket launcher, which is a nice way to clear out these enemies here. That guy is being a little silly. Okay. And safety save. Boop. Cool. All right, here we go. So now I do remember my movement. Nope. Okay. Oh my goodness, that was so close, come on. Okay, so if I crouch through and land on the door itself, it's very important that I do, uh, which is going to allow me to not end up getting sucked out. And there we threw, okay, there we go, we're through, we're through. Okay, so that just made this run a whole lot more tense, so I'm definitely sweating now. But with that, that's like the last big difficult sequence break of the run itself, I would say. Uh, it's just going to be movement intensive uh, portions for the remaining of the run. So if I'm able to move through and I don't get a soft lock here on this mission, we should still be in it. Uh oh. Oh, I almost died. Okay, no problem. No problem. That's why I got grab safety health in the previous missions. Okay. All right, so this Shadow Trooper, really cool. They named him after me. That's Covert Muffin. Uh, and we are going to be coming into our, n oops, our next arena, which is through here. Okay, so moving forward. So using force speed's really cool. It's going to make these lightsaber fights a lot easier. Okay, we got him. So we're gonna push you up, do this. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I'm the right SVFPS. Okay, do not forget to save. Do not forget to save. Do not forget to make a safety save. Okay, so here I'm going to save the game. Oops, nope, we wanna skip some of that. Wait, what? Okay, all right. All right, so entering this cutscene here is going to actually allow us to be able to enter this cutscene, uh, which is going to completely skip having to do this switch puzzle, which is very, very cool indeed. Then putting my lightsaber into the wall is going to end up causing it. So here I'm going to make a safety save because uh, just some weirdness with this trick. Uh, so here I'm gonna press this button here and then quick save the game. 
So here, uh, normally we would have to end up fighting off a huge list of enemies, but sticking, yes, okay, sticking the secret drone into the door ends up spawning it on the other side of the door, and that actually hits the end trigger of the mission itself. And that is going to allow us to skip one of the longer and more annoying missions in the entire run itself. Okay, this is a little scary because I just lost a lot of force there, missing a jump. Uh, but that's okay, that's okay. I'm just going to do a shorter force jump here and a short force jump there. And then grab the safety health, push this guy away, and then go into this tiny little crawl space. Okay, so here is Yavin Swamp. Yavin Swamp is one of the more difficult levels in the speedrun itself, I would say. Uh, definitely one of the ones that gives me a lot of trouble. Uh, but there, jumping on that rock is nice, and then jumping at very specific timing intervals and continuing a nice strafe jump chain allows me to get through that section very, very fast. That was a great jump chain. Then, next coming up here is going to be one of the trickier jumps in the run. So landing on that rock there, landing on that diagonal ends up stopping something known as a slope boost from happening. So a slope boost is uh, if I land on a piece of sloped terrain, it will actually end up converting uh, some of my vertical momentum and horizontal momentum. So if the slope is facing backwards into me, uh, then what will end up happening is it will cause me to lose speed. And that is incredibly important. Uh, for the run itself. Okay, but yeah, coming in here into Yavin Canyon, uh, this is going to be one of my favorite levels in the run itself. It's just a very beautiful uh, level with some pretty intricate movement. Uh, so coming through here, I'm moving a little bit slow. That's okay. There, just got a bunch of speed by landing on a slope in a very particular fashion. Jumping up here. Okay, I am like out of force, so we're going to go for a little bit of a slower route here as I'm jumping around. Uh, and so landing into the water also will actually end up causing me to lose a bunch of speed. But yeah, there I just ended up losing a bunch of speed as well. So we're going to go for a backup chain here. Oh boy. Okay, so I dropped my jump chain again. Okay, there's that. And now I have to wait for my force to regen. So if I had done that mission incredibly well, I would have ended up having just enough force to be able to get through there. But I'll take a one minute time for not having run this. Speaking of which, under three minutes left. Okay, covered. perfect. Well, these are the last two levels, and they are quite short, so that is good. I think we're, we're still going to finish under estimate, uh, as long as I don't get majorly trolled, which totally has never happened before in a speed game. <laughs> uh, so coming into the section here, we are going to be switching back to heavy style, and we need to end up killing two of these Sith here. Uh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I think they got one. They got one. And then that causes that rocket trooper there to end up firing a rocket. Okay, nice. All that safety health I got earlier in the run is really paying off here. Very, very nice. So upcoming here, as we are going to be coming up, uh, there's like less than a minute left in the run itself. I'm going to just grab some safety armor and another Bacta for a little bit of safety in the final mission. And then we are going to go ahead and enter this cutscene here. So normally we end up having to take a fight and then waiting for the entrance to end up opening. But if I just enter this cutscene, uh, Dasan opens the exit for us and allows us to just walk into the cutscene itself. Then coming into this uh, level, which is very, very short, uh, we are going to end up uh, coming up. And then here I'm going to do a, uh, a uh, something known as a Vino boost, which is jumping into a uh, sloped ceiling, which allows me uh, to build a bunch of speed, right? Because slopes convert vertical to horizontal. They can also do the same in reverse. So if you have a slope above you, you can end up uh, um, utilizing that to build a lot of horizontal speed. Uh, but upcoming here is going to be the final fight of the run itself, which is going to be facing off against the sun. I'm just going to wait for the cycle here. I'm not going to push it. And time is coming up. So get ready on time. All right. Okay, falling down to Dasan, and time. 51.59. Heck yeah, all you right. You did it. Yes. Right, that's even better than last time, and that was with the uh, the Spaceman struggle there towards the end, so congrats. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Only Spaceman giving me trouble, like, out of all of the incredibly difficult tricks in this run. I just, that makes me feel very, very good. I'm so excited that that was able to finish that run under SMIT. Yes, awesome. Heck yeah. Just under the door again. I love these estimates that you provide, <laughs> Muffin. It's fantastic. Yep. 
I, I like cutting it close. I like cutting it close. I like uh, giving myself that uh, extra kick of adrenaline to to uh, try and just barely close off on, on the knife's edge. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And folks, there is way more than where this came from. So coming up next, we have still two more Star Wars runs here on Mercy Kill from our one and only Muffin here this week. We have Jedi Academy coming up next, followed by Escape from Yavin 4. And we'll talk a little bit more about those categories after the break. However... As always, we are going to take our wellness break, and I want to remind you all that remember that Games Done Quick Hot Fix is brought to you by viewers like you, your subs, Give Subs Prime Gaming Subs and Bits help support our weekly Hot Fix content. Please consider supporting our daily content if you are enjoying these Hot Fix shows, if you are enjoying these very close finishes by talented runners such as Muffin. <laughs> Please be sure to support the channel. And as always, if you are watching on YouTube, wonderful to see you all. Go to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequake if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weekend, uh, week nights, excuse me, at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And with that being said, folks, everyone, be sure to stretch, hydrate, and be right back with Mercy Kill. Welcome back to Mercy Kill. I am joined here by the one and only Covert underscore Muffin. And this is Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. And we were talking about this on the break, Muffin. I've noticed that some of these games came out in rapid progression in the early 2000s. <laughs> I'm like, wow, these are really close together. You want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, uh, which is going to be the fourth game. Yeah, fourth game to come out in the anthology ended up coming out in 2002. And then in like eight months, this game, Jedi Knight Academy ended up coming out as kind of the last of the, the original anthology. Um, but uh, and that being said, because of that, we're going to see some very interesting things. Like in the first minute of the run, we'll be going out of bounds just by jumping out of bounds. Um, but um, yeah, so here in Jedi Knight Academy, the movement itself as well is going to be very similar to Outcast, with a few exceptions, right? So I'm going to be running all levels, no stab launch or no SL, with EB only for the routing. So you'll notice in the top right corner, there's the little EB. And this is in order to show off the really cool physics mechanic that came into Academy and why it's one of my favorite speed games, uh, which is known as Velocity Reduction on Ground Impact, or VRGI for short. So basically, whenever I jump um, from lower to higher ground, when I land on the ground, you'll hear a, like a clapping sound, right? So, and then when I jump from same elevation to same elevation, you should hear it. I'm getting a bunch of random boosts. Um, so when you hear that, that means the game just takes away 50% of my velocity. Just like that, just like that. However, if we end up jumping from higher to lower ground, that will actually end up not happening. So the goal with Academy is that I'm going to constantly be jumping from higher to ground. And the only way I'm going to mitigate VRGI is by doing something known as elevation boosting. It's not actually a boost, it's just stopping VRGI from proccing, from jumping from higher to lower ground. Then all levels, uh, there are going to be three um, story arcs chapters, if you will, within the game itself, tier one, tier two, and tier three. Each of those has five side missions. Normally for any percent, we skip one from each each tier because they're just the slowest ones. So three missions we wouldn't normally end up being uh, showed. However, for all levels, I will be showing off those three missions because they have some of the most interesting tech and the likes in them. Um, but yeah, that being said, I am good to get started and all I right. will give a countdown. All right, on your count. All right, starting in three, two, one and a half, one, go. <laughs> Good luck and have fun, Cover. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so coming into Yavin 1B, we are going to be coming across the true final boss of the game, which are these Howlers, which have very low hitboxes, and once they start moving, they can really troll you. Um, but getting uh, killing those two Howlers is going to allow us to end up moving through with our best friend in the entire galaxy, Rosh Pennon. So here, similar to Outcast, I don't actually end up starting with um, Force Jump, but we will be getting our Force Powers in the second mission um, as we do start with a lightsaber, which is really, really cool as well. Uh, then here is a really tricky elevation boost chain where I'm just going to be jumping slightly lower on that slope continuously. 
in order to get through. And then coming through here, after killing these stormtroopers, it's going to spawn the final enemy. I ended up missing uh, them, so I'm going to go for a very easy backup kill. Great. Okay, and so now coming into Yavin 2, we end up getting a list of force powers, including force jumps, so I can end up jumping for higher. And with this, utilizing that with crouch climbing to get just a slight additional bit of height, it's going to allow me to jump out of bounds immediately on starting the mission. Whoops. Uh, Sorry, this might this is gonna take me a bit to like get used to it because the movement in Outcast and Academy is slightly different uh, for how I want to be moving through the air with strafe jumps. Uh, but that's totally okay. That's totally okay. Uh, oh, I fell down here and got something known as an overbounce, which is an incredibly com complicated thing that I'm not going to explain. <laughs> All right, all right, we got past that section. So there, uh, going out of bounds immediately is going to allow us to actually skip a uh, secret drone puzzle as we come in and take down that robot very fast. So with Academy, um, the levels themselves are very different than Outcast uh, as a speed game itself. Um, the levels themselves tend to be a bit more open, with a lot of the, fo the focus being on nailing things like slope boosts, which will convert vertical momentum into horizontal speed, as well as utilizing force jump to be able to move, uh, inc uh, force jump to be able to jump for higher and longer. So a lot of the tricks and stuff that you'll see in Academy are going to be difficult. Um, oh god, I don't remember how to do the menu management here. Uh, so we're going to go to Corellia first, uh, go for lightning one. Uh, okay. So there's some keyboard menuing that we do here. Normally I don't remember the sequence because <laughs> I didn't practice <laughs> of course. Uh, but we are going to be coming into one of the hardest missions, uh, immediately. So here in the side missions, I'm allowed to pick a better force power, but here's one of the hardest jumps in the early game, and I got it first try. I remember struggling with that last time I was on Mercy Kill, so that is really great getting that. And what I just did there was jumped over an instant kill death trigger uh, in order to skip having to do a switch puzzle. Then uh, coming up here, we're going to jump on one of these claws here, and I'm going to set up for an elevation boost and a damage boost on, on the rail line to be able to get over here very, very quickly. Nicely done. So each time I jump on one of those uh, blue rail lines, it will actually end up uh, causing me to lose some health. So health management and movement in this mission is incredibly tight and incredibly important that I hit it. And I've just been nailing a lot of really, really difficult things. Then coming through here, we're going to crouch in order to be able to uh, keep ourselves in the air for a little bit longer. And you'll notice that there's a consistent timing where I'm just trying to jump from higher to lower ground. So jumping on top of this guy's head, then landing on this ramp, then landing on the ground to try and uh, continue the jump chain forward and maintain my speed. Because once again, if I don't jump from higher to lower ground, I end up losing 50% of my momentum immediately, uh, which causes some jump chains in particular to be impossible. So very nicely done so far. So next coming up in, in here, this is going to be tier one danger, the next side mission, where we are going to do another cutscene enter that we saw in a lot of outcasts. And it's very similar to the one uh, where I had to uh, kill off a list of enemies. Um, in outcast. And so in this cutscene, my goal, which I don't think I, uh, I don't. I might not make this, so maybe I should go for a closer part instead. Yeah, we're going to... No, we're just going to turn the part. We'll just turn the part. Okay, so I accidentally entered too far into the cutscene by skipping a portion of it. Uh, normally, we want to grab two parts here in the beginning, but that's okay. All I have to do is a jump chain. So each time I'm on sand, there are going to be these sandworm enemies that will start rumbling and moving about like this. And if I stand on the sand for too long, they come out of the sand uh, and end up jumping up and trying to give me a hug with their teeth. Uh, because hugging with your teeth is something that is a common thing in s and sandworm culture uh, that they don't understand is not a cultural phenomena uh, with, with humans. You don't end up trying to bite entire bodies of things in order to show your affection. Then coming through here, we're going to be coming over for our third part, which is known as bunny ears. And then here, yeah, okay, I just barely missed that elevation boost. No problem. The backup is just to set up for another one, right? And this is a really nice level to showcase off Academy as a speed game in particular. Uh, just simply because when we miss a jump chain, right, the backup is just to end up uh, resetting yourself up uh, from higher to lower ground in order to make it to a part. 
Then coming through here, here's another small little chain, which I am going to intentionally lose speed so that I can just maintain my positioning really well. And that is going to be the fourth and final part. Uh, if you play through this game casually, uh, that find, like this mission in particular, it gives you like so much anxiety and stress. But as a speedrunner, we just know that we can just jump continually over and over again. Okay, sure, let's do this. Mission next. So this is going to be actually one of the side missions we end up skipping in uh, any percent, just because it's slower, right? It's a longer mission. Uh, but it's definitely one of my favorite tier one missions in general, um, which is going to be tier one fatal. And so in Fatal, uh, there are going to be uh, these douchemongers that have ended up um, taking over this area. And um, here, just waiting for them to open the door. Okay, I got a little trolled by RNG. That's totally okay, that's totally okay. And so they lay down all of these bombs all over the place. So what I'm going to do is just disable the bombs and then do a nice strafe jump chain in order to uh, skip having to open this door. Um, oh, okay, I'm dead. <laughs> uh, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, so here what I'm just trying to do is just set up whatever elevation boost I can uh, in order to uh, continue to just move quickly throughout the mission. Then coming through here is going to be an enemy whose key we're going to grab. Ooh, I lagged there, that got me. And then we will continue to an indoor portion. So. Uh, with that door closed, I ended up sequence breaking with that big jump chain to get over the chasm. Uh, we actually ended up uh, not being able to open that door now. So I'm going to have to do a very, very difficult jump chain in order to get back through on my return visit. But that's totally okay. I am a trained professional. Uh, I think we go in first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This seems good. This seems good. So here's another bomb. Yep, two more. Okay, good, good. I did not miss a bomb yet. Then coming through here, I'm going to activate force speed to slow down time, activate this bomb, and then crouch climb up uh, just before uh, the elevator gets out of reach uh, to be able to get through a little bit quicker. Then next coming through here, I'm gonna roll for a little bit of safety, and here is the big jump chain. So here, jumping like this, and then jumping on this rail to catch the elevation boost, I'm able to just barely crouch and be able to make that jump, then doing a very, very nice crouch climb, which just saves like two seconds, because you can just go over to the left and take the stairs. <laughs> but I am a, a fancy schmancy speedrunner and, and am looking to go fast. And now, uh, because that door is locked and that's normally where you backtrack through, no problem, I just ended up doing some very difficult movement uh, to be able to get through anyway. Then uh, coming through the section, we're just now heading to the end of the mission, uh, which is nice, which is right at the beginning of the mission itself. And major shout outs to run, one runner in particular. So some of, a lot of the new tech that has been coming up in Jedi Knight Academy in the past like two years especially is something known as grip strats. And uh, so shout outs to a runner whose screen name is Dr. Meowington, who actually found a way to get like a stormtrooper over here to hit this end trigger in order to, to end the mission, like right as you hit the last bomb, uh, which is still like a little finicky, I believe, but it's still a very, very cool development in the speed game itself. So uh, major shout outs to you, Meowington, and everybody else who has found so many things in this game. All right. So coming into here, this is one of my favorite missions of the speedrun, which is Tier 1 Surprise. has a very particular opener where I'm trying to catch these slopes at very specific pos positionings. Um, I did an okay job. So we didn't get the full chain there, but that's totally okay. That's totally okay. Then jumping over here, we're going to come into Canyon Climb, which saves just about 30 seconds. So coming in and landing into very sp particular pixels. This one is, oh, I got it is one of the more tight ones, this one as well. And if I do this really fast and really good, I can end up crouch climbing up here and it saves me from going into a tunnel. Then coming over here, uh, we are going to be coming into this hole, which was discovered by Prasco, uh, which allows me to just literally crouch in order to get out of bounds. I wasn't doing anything in particular to, to get out of bounds besides just crouching and fitting into a tiny hole. Oh, nice, I got that first try. So there, crouching, uh, there's a little bit of a, a tiny little trigger uh, that caused a droid here to spawn. Um, so crouching into that trigger, which is just peeking barely through that floor there, allows me uh, to come into this area. Then using these thermal detonators, I can end up 
um, pushing this barricade here, if I can remember it. I'm having a tough time, so I might just go to the old setup. I think it's just looking straight down. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to use uh, Force Lightning 3, which is what we've been specking into, because at the start of every single side mission, it allows us to spec into an advanced force power. And killing off those uh, six final enemies allows me to uh, end the mission very, very quickly. Uh, let's just go into Rage 1 now before I forget. Cool. Okay, so coming in here, this is Tier 1 Sour. Uh, tier 1 Sour is going to be our final side mission. And um, the grip strats I was alluding to especially uh, have really made this mission a lot quicker by like 20-something seconds, I believe. Uh, I may be wrong there. Uh, and it would skip... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Use lightsaber here. And it would skip having to do all of this. No, this for the firing trigger. Uh, so here, this is an arena just that just has a certain list of enemies. And then going into that... Oh, did I enter this cutscene by accident? Or did I miss someone? Oh, no. Uh, I may have just messed something up. So I'm just going to start killing people. Yeah, I think I messed... I think I messed something up. So I'm going to restart the mission. Whoops! Okay, I don't know what happened there. So I'm just going to restart the mission. <laughs> That's totally okay. This is like exactly what happens whenever you're rusty. Uh, so with grip strats, we can actually take an enemy and end up jumping on his head over and over again uh, in order to build a bunch of height. Okay, both of those people died and then using a very specific visual trigger. Okay, I missed one. Yeah, which was this guy. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, yeah, I think I accidentally um, messed up that cutscene there. So here's a reverse door crouchy, and oh, we got it, which does not really save much of any time. <laughs> Good. I just do it because it looks really, really cool. Then uh, using that box there, I went for a little bit of a boost. I didn't get it, but that's totally OK. No problem. Whoops. I did not mean to lightning him. Uh, for my binds with Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, I'm just used to having push beyond Q. But on Jedi Knight Academy, I have lightning on Q. Uh, so here I'm going to go for a trick that only saves one second if I get it really fast. It is no longer going to be saving me a second. I'm going to quick quick load to try it again. Okay, nope. Get in there. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I didn't get it. That's okay. It literally only saves a second. Opposed to just coming over here and hitting the switch and then getting completely trolled. No. All right. Okay, all right, we're okay. We're okay, just breathe, just breathe. Uh, where's the door? There's the door. So here we just hit a trigger for Chewie to open the door. Uh, if we stand too close to the door, what will actually end up happening is Chewie will just actually end up closing the door as we try and open it. Then coming through here is going to be the final list of enemies, which will end up spawning the end trigger for the mission. Okay, we're done. We're almost done with tier one. So after you finish the uh, four to five side missions, five for all levels, that allows us uh, to start into the set of story missions for the arc itself. So here, this is going to be the first one, uh, which is known as Hoth 2. Uh, it doesn't actually start on Hoth 1 uh, because Raven Software ended up losing Hoth 1. We don't know what ended up happening, happening to that. So, oh wow, that was weird. Uh, it hijacked my movement. Okay, that was very bizarre. I've never had that happen before. Uh, no problem, though. Uh, so coming into this tunnel, we are going to be picking up a second Tauntaun, uh, which is going to allow us to skip roughly half the level itself. Uh, okay, we got a Golden Star Tauntaun. That's nice. Uh, but first, before we ended up end up doing a large sequence break, we're going to glitch out this Tauntaun. So walking off this ledge here with the Tauntaun is going to uh, cause it to pop Jaden off the Tauntaun. Perfect. Um, which is going to turn it into a Olympic ice skater. So doing this ends up causing us to lower our um, deceleration of the Tauntaun itself. So with that, beautiful. We are able to build a bunch of speed by turning with the Tauntaun and then build a bunch of height in order to be able to get through and uh, skip the majority of the mission itself. So very, very nice. Getting that first try is really, really good, uh, especially with that setup, because that is uh, my own 
setup that I, I came up with, uh, which is definitely one of the harder uh, setups overall for the skip. So very, very cool. So coming into here into Hoth 3, continuing on with the number progression, is going to be our final story mission for um, the, the Tier 1 missions themselves. And it's going to be very similar to an Outcast level, where there's just going to be a bunch of enemies, uh, and it's going to be in tight hallway corridors. So here we picked up the uh, Destructive elect Electromagnetic Pulse 2 gun, which is going to allow us to deal extra damage to robotics in general. Uh, so there that droid ended up trolling us, so we just ended up using the DEMP gun uh, to be able to kill the droid very, very fast. Whoops, all right, we got caught there just on a little bit of a texture. So here, wherever I can, I'm just trying to jump from higher to lower ground uh, in order to get through uh, these sections a little bit quicker. Then using Force Lightning there actually ended up stopping those Stormtroopers from moving, uh, allowing me to get through that section a little bit quicker and a little bit easier, mitigating a good bunch of RNG. Very, very nice. Okay. Oh, I should have grabbed Grip 1. What was I thinking? Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, that's okay. I can show off another funny um, Allura kill strat. Um, no, let's just go for the safe strat because I lost uh, a bunch of time in Sour. Okay, so here I'm going to go for an old strat for a little bit of safety because this is going to be our first boss fight. So here, um, using uh, the DEMP, it actually ends up uh, freezing Allura into place, uh, but she actually got a lot of saber blocks there, so we didn't end up getting a quick kill. But that's totally okay. That's totally okay. Okay, so here we are going to be coming on to Tier 2 Trip. And so uh, with this mission, I'm just going to briefly take a bit of time uh, to explain bike mechanics themselves. So here, when I move to side to side, it ends up causing us to build a bunch of speed with vehicles. Then using the speed boost feature, I can end up building even more speed. Um, then if I do a side jaunt hip ch check feature, which is like from Return of the Jedi, with that, I can end up building a ton of speed and causing the bike to repeatedly uh, fling in a very fast direction. So with this, if I take the bike over here, um, yeah, that looks good. Oh, I didn't actually, I have to restart the mission. Whoops, I forgot to use Force Rage. There we go, okay. So taking the bike over here and then getting into a very specific position, a very specific angle as well. Uh, it's going to allow me to... Oh, nope, that's slow. Nope. Yeah, okay, okay, I can make that work. I can cause the bike to end up hitting me and send me to the top of the mountain itself. Because, for whatever reason, uh, the end trigger to the mission is very close to the start trigger. Now that was close. Um, I might have to just restart the mission to get another bike. That's okay. This is like, yeah, one of the most uh, finicky tricks in the run. Uh, it's definitely one that I have probably the single segment that I've spent the most amount of time practicing, especially whenever I've had to do it for marathons. But of course, not being able to practice uh, gives a nice constraint of trying to like figure out and go with it. Uh, this, oh, that actually probably worked. So here, rolling allows me, yeah, to build uh, a bit more speed as well. So now, with that bike having launched me to the, the top of the mountain itself, I'm now going to start an elevation boost jump chain uh, in order to work my way to the end trigger. And there I accidentally jumped um, and lost all of my speed from jumping um, from lower to higher ground. But that's okay, that's okay. The end trigger is literally just over here. As I set up one more safety quick save. And there it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Let's let's just do this. Let's just do this with my gut. Uh, okay. So upcoming here is going to be tier two rogue, which is uh, a pretty sizable mission casually. However, because we have the power of force jump, um, what we can ooh, end up doing? Oh no! As I outcast save again. Okay. What we can end up doing is jumping up here and then going for a very big jump chain. Nice. We got it. Very 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 nice. Uh, in order to jump across, jump around a very, very large invisible wall. So like the devs intentionally stuck a absolutely ginormous invisible wall, uh, which we just end up jumping around. <laughs> Great. Okay, and that is going to be tier two rogue. Uh, I actually am not entirely sure what mission this is off the top of my head. Um, it might be this mission if I'm thinking about it correctly. This might be Rancor? Yeah, it's Rancor. Okay, okay, cool. 
Uh, so there are new, well, new as in they came out within the last like four years or so um, that I am just not comfortable with. So I am just going to be going uh, for my um, the very, very old route here for a little bit of safety. Okay, cool. Uh, so they're grabbing this key and opening the door. Uh, so then this mission, we have a bunch of uh, prisoners that were imprisoned by the huts themselves. And so we are going to be rescuing them. Oh, no, you need to die. So here, opening this switch is going to bring us into the arena itself. And then here is Jimmy the Rancor. Uh, that is now going to be chasing us around. Whoops. Uh, so for sport, they end up having the Rancor chase around prisoners. But uh, because I am a good Jedi, we are going to end up not doing that. So there, using the thermal detonator, oh yeah, mind trick. Uh, using the thermal detonator allows me to extend my hitbox uh, through that wall there. So instead of having to backtrack every single time through the hallway uh, in order to be able to get to the next switch, I can actually end up just doing a sequence of these animation clips in order to be able to release the next bunch of prisoners, allowing me to expedite the mission and make it a lot quicker. So here, uh, this is the most difficult animation clip in the mission. Uh, hang on, just going to quick load for safety. Nope. So I want Jaden to, oh, there we go, there we go, to really clip into that wall. So if I don't have a good initial setup as well, what will end up happening is Jaden just doesn't go far enough into the wall. Um, but then coming through here, there are going to be a bunch of prisoners. And I am going to quick save and quick load in order to skip dialogue. Awesome. And then they're going to give me a security key. Then, um, oh no, as they get very clumped up here. I think I did this in the wrong order, probably. Yeah, because they are really getting clumped up. Okay, get going. You guys can do it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and so I'm going to actually wait down here because if I wait outside of a specific range, after the prisoners get freed, they end up despawning. If I get too close to the end trigger of the mission, um, oop, nope, that is the wrong force power. That is, I do not want to slow down time right now. Um, then they can just bunch up and the prisoners will have a hard time of getting through. Yeah, like they're they're starting to bunch up. So I'm just going to back out. OK, and there's the queue for the end of the mission. And so we can now end up leaving and getting through. Awesome. OK, and there's the trigger for the end of the mission. And voila, that is Rancor. OK, uh, so we have two more. So here we're going to be coming into uh, Dosu next, which is going to be a uh, map known as Deep Red. And in Deep Red, we actually end up getting all of our weapons uh, confiscated. So no lightsaber. All we are going to be using is this very uh, beginner uh, weapon, which is the uh, E11 blaster rifle. Um, I kind of goofed, uh, but that's OK. Nice backup, nice backup. So here, what I'm going to do is get into a specific spot and then jumping up. Uh, this jump here is incredibly finicky. I'm going to try and land on a tiny little micro ledge, uh, which is there we go. There we go. This is going to allow me to start moving out of bounds on top of these rooftops, then doing a jump chain here to get across. Oh, just barely missed it because my turning is rusty. OK. Oh, my goodness. And now I missed the elevation boost there. OK, this it's like this is really showcasing off just how tiny a lot of these ledges end up being. And then jumping up to this pipe, you're going to see definitely a ceiling. Nothing, nothing bizarre here. The rooftop totally working as intended uh, as we jump across and enter into this cutscene trigger. <laughs> I mean, that's what the roof to my house looks like, right? I like just I go up and it causes this weird aquarium effect. Totally natural. Uh, but now that we have ended up uh, doing that sequence break, we are going to open up the switch. And I went for a, a surf, which I just barely ended up missing. Uh, no problem. So here coming into here, this is one of the hardest bosses casually in the game. But just simply by using. Oh, no, I went to the academy. Oh, no. Uh, disconnect. Uh, disconnect. <laughs> disconnect. <laughs> there we go. Probably would have been faster for me to just continue through. Uh, so there I actually went to Academy, which caused me to skip the last uh, side mission. That's totally fine. I set up a really nice quick save because we still have one more side mission to do. Uh, sure, let's just go for heal two. Okay. 
Right. So coming into here, this is going to be tier two wedge. This is the mission that is most commonly skipped in tier two, even though it's just very, very slightly slower uh, compared to Rancor, uh, the mission where we ended up saving all those prisoners from Jimmy the Rancor. Um, but here uh, for wedge, we are going to be uh, taking out uh, this gas mining operation that the Imperials have moved in on uh, with our good friend Wedge Antilles. Uh, so coming through here, I just know where all these bombs are placed. But after we place this bomb, it's going to be important that I maintain my force. So I'm going to be jumping up very specifically. And then here is an incredibly difficult jump chain. I'm going to go for a backup. Yeah, nice. OK, great. Got, getting that first try is really good. And then coming into here, we are going to come over to this next bomb. Then we are going to pull out the flechette here. Whoops. Uh, it's not popping me up for whatever reason. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, moon wheel. Okay. So this glitch here is very, very tricky. Doing a side cartwheel animation and then quick saving and quick loading the game at a very, very particular time is going to allow me, nice, second try, uh, allow me to do this. And we're going to see moon wheel a couple more times in uh, Escape from Yavin 4 when we uh, get to that map in particular. Uh, but there, that just ended up uh, skipping me from having to do some really, really tricky platforming uh, throughout the rest of the mission, and it saved me a good chunk of time. So coming over here, um, as we are progressing through, we are going to be doing another big jump chain that is very difficult. Nice got at first try, nice jump cancel there, which is a bit of advanced movement tech where I'm canceling out my force jump. Uh, just slightly before I hit the zenith of the jump. And that is going to be important because whenever you jump off of the ground, the game actually ends up drawing an invisible ceiling right above your head. And so if you jump for that full duration, you'll end up bonking your head against that ceiling as I almost fall down, uh, causing you to lose a bit of horizontal speed and causing you to accelerate downwards a little bit quicker. But there we go. Nicely done. Good movement for the most part. Not really much of any struggle. We hit all of the difficult stuff first try. Cool. Except for Moon Wheel that we got second try. Okay, now we can go to the Academy for our next set of story missions. So this next mission, Vajun 1, is probably the hardest mission in the entire uh, game. I mean, there are a lot of really difficult uh, missions in the run itself, but this one in particular is very, very, very difficult. So here, what I'm going to do is use Force Protect in order to cause this acid rain to uh, stop firing out. And then I'm going to be killing uh, both of these Stuker Troopers for a little bit of safety before heading down into the lower portions of the level. So after I get out of this indoor movement, which is very tight and very technical, there I ended up missing one of my jump locations I wanted to land on. I'm going to grab the safety health kit, even though it only heals me eight. That is a nice little buffer for the upcoming area. Um, so after I get out of this indoor movement, hopefully, um, we are going to be coming into one of the most difficult jump chains in the entire game, which is known as Suomi Skip. So here you'll see that I have a Stuker Concussion Rifle, which gives me a bit of knockback, but here I'm going to focus. No, I didn't like the amount of speed I got there in the beginning. No, I don't like the, that amount of speed. I think I have the quick load bug. Okay, I had to go for a backup here, that's fine. I'm actually just gonna fall down for safety. So there is a full chain here um, that we can end up doing to, oh boy, that's not good, uh, to be able to get to the very uh, end portion of the mission itself. But I just ended up failing um, one of them. So nope, that's not the direction I wanna be looking. So here I'm going to do a very precise crouch climb followed by another very difficult sequence break where I double stuker shot there to be able to get over. So if I had continued the full jump chain, I would have gone over and then had to do that last little sequence break there. Um, but that's okay, that's totally okay. Like getting through the section without taking a death or having to uh, quick load back is, is very, very good. Cool, okay, so now that we got out of Vajun 1, that is going to be very, very nice. Vajun 2 is the complete opposite. It's gonna be a, be a very easy mission in general. Um, that is going to be very, very relaxing. The only thing that I really have to do here is end up uh, taking down uh, this lightsaber engagement. And so we ended up picking up Strong Style coming out of Tier 1 itself in order uh, to be able to have an easier time for killing a few enemies there and then a list of enemies in the next mission itself. Okay, so here is Kyle. So we're gonna give him a little push to get to this trigger. And normally we end up um, 
doing this puzzle here. But instead, what I can do is just line up for a very precise jump and then uh, get up there. So Kyle is just stuck down there holding up an electrified pipe. Uh, but he'll be fine. He'll be fine. I believe in Kyle Katarn. <laughs> So there, jumping through that hole is going to allow me uh, to continue through without having to wait on another laser cycle. And then there is a nice little elevation boost to allow me to maintain my speed as I am progressing through to continue the jump chain. Then after this, we are just going to be en end up uh, force pulling some mirrors and then going into Bajun 3. So Skybills, if you have like any questions or anything, please feel free to ask at this point. This is a great time to do it. Awesome. Well, I do want to let you know that you have about 21 minutes left in your run for stop. So Okay, great. That's good. See, yeah. that's the thing I love about Muffin. Muffin, like, never panics. It's just like, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> let's keep going, you know? Yeah, <laughs> nice I, poker face. I, I only ever panic, like, right at the start. And then when, it, when you just, like, get into it, like, it's totally fine. It's oh, yeah. totally good. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to talk over the gamer noises. That's part of the experience, too, you know? Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Um, so in this in this level, um, this is going to be a, uh, a nice level where there is going to be a bit of saber combat. So a lot of the saber combat is some, like, really complex manipulations of AI triggers, as well as uh, utilizing heavy style with vertical, which has the shortest passive portion. And then we can end up shortening that passive portion even more. But, oh, goodness, I don't remember. I think it's this. Uh, so here in Robot Room, yeah, yeah, this is it, this is it. Okay. Okay, that was pretty good. So here the robots spawn in a very specific order, which I totally didn't forget initially, but I got very, very lucky in um, guessing which ones uh, they were. But using the DEMP, I'm able to kill them off, and then when that wave is dead, the next one spawns instantaneously. So I can just kill them through the door, as you saw. But here, this is probably one of the hardest enemies, but they're activating force speed at a very specific attack animation that the enemy does, or at a specific portion of the attack animation, allows me to action lock him with force speed, stopping him from moving around. Uh, but in here, this is normally the hardest fight in the game, but because we just enter this cutscene, we can still attack Rosh, which is the final boss, and then we can um, just end up progressing into um, the, the final tier of missions, which is going to be tier three. Okay, oh boy, all right. So Rift is going to be one of the most fun missions. There is a lot of really cool tech in this mission itself, especially going to be a very, very big jump chain upcoming here. So now with force jump level three, we can jump for very high and very long. And here, spacing out my jumps very specifically. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna do another suker for safety. All right, and we got it. Very, very nice. Oh no, I didn't have enough health. Uh, uh, I'm going to play this safe. I'm just gonna play this safe. You know what? Man, okay, so I... Oh, don't kill me! All right, uh, maybe we won't play it safe. I'm gonna go... Oh, okay. Hang on, I'm gonna go for it one more time. Nope. Uh, this guy's in the way. Uh, that's a really weird start. It's very important that I jump a very specific way to build up speed. Okay, and then this... Okay, there we go, there we go. So we should have enough health here. Yep, yeah, we do, we do. I must have hit like the lower portion of the ground, which ends up causing me to take just enough damage to die from fall damage. Um, but that's totally okay, that's so, totally okay. Getting it that with that few tries feels very, very good for the full jump chain. Um, but that basically just allows us to skip like a multitude of like saber wielding enemies and the like. So that is very, very, very cool sequence break. I. Uh, no, we're going to save save that mission for later for a little bit of uh, spookiness. Um, yeah, absorb. Uh, and then these, nope, debt packs. Okay, so upcoming here is going to be Biss, and Biss is going to be uh, an indoor mission that is going to be ha featuring a lot of very tight corridors. Nice, and I spaced my Stuker shot there perfectly, so I ended up getting an elevation boost and getting one there as well. Uh, so with these tight indoor missions, they can be very tricky uh, to get through because like enemies can walk in your way, right? 
yada, yada, yada. But here we're gonna create um, a little cuddle pile with the stormtroopers and then lay down these dead packs uh, in order to clear them out so that they don't box me out. They don't get in my way as I'm progressing through. And then using another shot there and using force protect, which is the green shell around me, is going to cause me to mitigate 80% of damage as I move through these sections. But then here, what we're gonna do is we have three death packs, so I'm just gonna lay them all down here and then switch to the rocket launcher and take out that stormtrooper. Very, very nice. Okay, so upcoming here, after I d d disabled the tractor beam a little bit earlier in the mission itself, it allowed me um, to spawn in these TIE Fighters, which we have to destroy here. And so if I moved through the mission very, very quickly, I'm able to catch that TIE Fighter there, which we have named Tricky Dick. And then back there is Long John Silver. Okay, so we just missed one TIE Fighter. Uh, but Long John Silver and uh, Tricky Dick are the most important ones to kill first because they just simply take the longest uh, to come back around. But now coming over here, we're going to use Force Protect and then Stuker myself off of that ledge in order to mitigate the grand majority of fall damage there. Oops. Then using the rocket launcher here, because it has a faster rate of attack, we're going to clear out those enemies with the rockets and then use Force Lightning to clear out the rest. Cool, nice, and that's Biss. Awesome. Okay, next up coming here, we're gonna go to Ord Mental to hang out with our good friend Boba Fett. Uh, we'll take Rocket Launcher for a little bit of safety for the event. And enter the cutscene. Good, good, good. I remembered. So this mission is really cool. There's going to be three bombs on either side that we are going to end up placing. Um, and just simply because uh, Boba Fett is not as skilled as pressing buttons as we are, uh, he is not going to be able to disable those bombs because uh, here are going to be a bunch of weapons caches, which uh, Boba Fett was working on smuggling. But the really cool thing about Bounty is that there are a lot of these very, very tight movement sections, which I'm honestly not doing uh, my best job at. It's like, it's very tricky to be able to get through these sh sections very, very fast. So at like top tier, uh, ooh, level play, right? Yeah, there, I just bonked into that wall. So that stopped me from being able to continue my jump chain. But here, just jumping on this box, <laughs> Boba Fett! Oh, I'm gonna fall down here. Yep, oh, the rust is so real, dude. I love it. Uh, so now I'm going to have to jump back out, but there is like an absolutely incredible jump chain that I could have done as I bonk into another pillar uh, in order to get a very, very nice continuation uh, through these missions. Um, but now we have completed the first half of the mission, so we are going to come back over here to this section and then set up a nice elevation boost chain there to go very, very far, nicely done. And then, nice, grab that elevation boost. That elevation boost is actually kind of finicky uh, and very difficult to get. Uh, then we're gonna pull out the Stuker to be able to back boost us to get a little bit of additional speed. One more time in this room. And then activate the bomb while I'm crouching to get a nice little surf to get through. Uh, but the main reason we ended up entering the cutscene at the start of the mission is that if I did do a good job of moving through the mission very, very fast, Boba Fett would have actually ended up boxing us out on the return trip. Uh, of course, my movement was not quite where I would have wanted it to be, uh, so that wasn't the case. But up here, coming into this final area, Boba Fett will have spawned up above, so if I'm... Oh no, he just he has the E11. Okay, this is good for us. Oh, come here. No, Boba, uh, we're getting trolled. And he pulls out rockets, which is bad. So I'm gonna activate force speed. Oh no, and he's jumping. Okay, jumping is like the worst thing that enemies can do to us. And we're gonna just take him down. <laughs> oh, we got majorly trolled by Boba. Excellent. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's do grip strats for memes. So now that we have finished off Bounty, we're gonna to come to Hevel. And Hevel, which is very different from the other tier three missions, is going to be mostly a verticality based mission. So moving through these sections, uh, I want to try and use the shortest possible force jump I can in order to be able to make it make these jumps up. And I'm doing a pretty good job. We're gonna go for a little bit of a safety strat here and start with a nice little turn. Uh, I'm gonna double stuker this because I did not have enough speed. Uh, so you'll notice that my force is just barely about to run out, and that is by design. I want my force to be incredibly low. And then coming into here into Lightning Spire, as you can see why it has that name, uh, it can be very tricky to get through. If I don't move fast enough through the area, 
as you just saw. Uh, it gives the enemies a little bit of time to be able to aggro on top of me and use Force Lightning, which actually ends up causing us to cancel out our Force Jump input. So you just like awkwardly fall down uh, as you're just trying to get through. No, I quit to the Academy again. <laughs> oh no. Disconnect. Uh, where is this save? I have no idea where the last time I quick saved. I think it's like right before the bombs. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's fine. Uh, so the reason why I had to backload is because I just literally forgot to go to the last side mission, which is going to be the scariest mission of the entire run, most likely, except for maybe uh, tier one, uh, tier one, uh, core one. Uh, no, all we need is grip one, I believe. Uh, yeah, I believe these are the weapons. So here in this mission, uh, we are going to be introduced to Jimmy the Rancor. Uh, so here I'm going to try and get Jimmy to break these boxes, which he did. Thanks, Jimmy, but he's giving me a hug. So I'm going to end up restarting the mission. I think it's do this and then. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, he sent us flying. OK, I have no idea where I am now. Oh, there he is. OK, so I'm going to destroy that explosive canister that explosive canister. Uh, I'm gonna force lightning that guy and then jump down and then crouch climb up here and then come over here for this uh, saber wielder. Okay, good, Jimmy is following us. That's what we want. So then I'm going to use a rocket which got just sent back into my face because this guy was alive. I'm gonna use this rocket to destroy these expo explosive canisters. Then attacking you. Okay, so major shout outs to one runner in particular whose screen name is Zenny, uh, who did a lot of work on figuring out the AI of Jimmy the Rancor. Um, so they are moving through. Did I miss a panel? No, 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 we're good, we're good. Okay, just gonna kill this guy for safety. And oh, 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 okay, I guess not. Okay, there we go. Little less there we go. than 10 minutes, by the way. Little less than 10 minutes. Okay, good, good. Yeah, that's good. Jimmy? Okay, we're waiting for Jimmy to break this wall. Okay, great. All right, and then we're gonna pull this guy out of the way. Wait, actually, that's like... Oh no, I'm out of force. Uh, what do we do here? Oh no, Jimmy! Okay, I think he broke it. He did, he did. Oh no, Jimmy! Oh god, Jimmy! <laughs> okay, so that guy ended up using an ability known as Force Rage. Uh, which is bad. Okay, he's back over here. He's back over here. Okay, so I'm going to push their bodies out of the way. What, what is Jimmy doing? Okay, there's Jimmy. Oh, no, I'm out of force. Oh, God, Monka S. All right, get me up there. All right, we're through. Not over yet. So here, destroying those uh, yellow canisters is going to allow Jimmy to have a much more direct path. And then we're going to shoot this guy. Shoot that guy. Again. All right, it's that I kill all these enemies and then I work through. Okay, okay, this is good. All right, pull this guy back. All right, all right, we're good. We're good. We're fine. This is fine. This is fine. So if you don't destroy the, the yellow canisters like I've been doing, uh, Jimmy can actually just end up going and attacking those instead. Please break that. Please break that. So like a really good time on an IL um, by a runner like Zenny, for instance, is going to be a very low, if not sub two. Um, however, this is absolutely not going to be a sub two. <laughs> and that is totally okay. But basically, it was thought for a very long time that Jimmy's AI was very, very random in nature. And Zenny ended up just picking up the IL and discovering that no, indeed, it is not. Uh, so here, I'm just going to wait for him to break these. Excellent. And then I'm going to jump up. Okay. All right. Here's Jimmy. He turned the corner. And there we go. We're able to end the mission. Excellent. Okay. Okay, breathe. Um, all right, Flechette. So now we are going to be entering into the final four missions themselves. Three of them are going to be incredibly short. One of them is going to be a bit on the lengthier side. So coming over here in this mission, I'm going to jump on this Stormtrooper's head. Uh, and then I'm going to jump up here to this ledge. And then jump up here to this bit and roll and fall off. That is totally okay. So we're just going to wait for a little bit for a little more force and use the Suker to pop ourselves up. Okay, so that itself, that jump chain right there, all because I could jump on that Stormtrooper's head 
ends up skipping like the grand majority of the level. And you might say, there's no bridge there. I don't see a bridge. Well, the bridge is actually completely active, even though it's vis invisible, allowing us to skip the longest mission in the entire game itself. <laughs> Which is great. That is fantastic. That's like one of my favorite uh, se series of sequence breaks uh, to get across a mission. But then upcoming here, we are going to do something similar. We're going to skip a very lengthy platforming section and then just end up jumping over uh, a cutscene trigger there to be able to move through a little bit quicker. Upcoming here, this enemy can be very, very scary, but if you just jump exactly like that, you will spawn have him do a lightsaber throw instead of um, doing an attack animation like a force pull to pull you back or uh, a force lightning to like cancel out your jump input. But up here, we are trying to catch a very, very specific cycle here um, on on this section. So oh, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to set up for a uh, backup strat. It's going to be doing this. No problem. Easy peasy. That is the old strat. Uh, but here, using Force Absorb just for a little bit of safety. And because I move through those sections fast enough, I'm able to get through that instant kill death plane um, and progress into the mission very, very quickly. So very, very nicely done. Good. Pretty good task for two. We've gone like all the difficult things uh, pretty much first try. OK, so next upcoming here, we are going to be heading into this fight uh, where we are going to be choosing to go for the light side itself. And here, just waiting for force to regenerate. I am then going to be activating force speed at a very specific time in order to action lock Alora. If I don't do this, what end up happening is she'll also use uh, force speed uh, and and do have this weird damage bug where it becomes incredibly difficult uh, to actually kill her fast. So upcoming here is going to be one of the um, hardest tricks in the entire game right at the end of the run, which is going to be known as Vrindor. We'll go for it for a bit, but if I don't get it after a number of tries, that is totally okay. So here we're going to set up a save just for safety, wait for some force, and then I'm going to go for it. So here I'm trying to deactivate my hill. Um, in a very particular fashion, and there we go. We got that incredibly fast. That was so good, dude. That was so good. And that is my own personal setup for Vrindor that I, I came up with, which is cool. Um, basically, what happened is there's two destructible pillars down there, um, which uh, can be destroyed using your lightsaber hilt. Then doing a very large jump sequence here, we can end up going to the end of the mission. So time is going to be coming up very, very soon as I progress in towards the final fight of the entire run. Uh, please don't troll me. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Okay, cool. So here, um, we're going to use force speed again to be pairing that with our lightsaber to kill it and get ready on time. Time. 4817, oh wow. <laughs> let's go, that dude. That is a pronounced improvement <laughs> yeah, from last let's year. let's go. And I'll tell you why, I remember Jimmy last year. I remember Jimmy, <laughs> yeah. and Jimmy gave you an unbelievably <laughs> difficult time last year. And this year, yeah. smooth, absolutely smooth. Yeah, yeah, like tricks like Vrindor, levels like tier one rail. I think I like saved 30 seconds on tier one rail by itself over last year's run. It's just like, there's so many incredibly difficult things that can completely go wrong. And I made that look a lot easier than it actually was. Um, Oh man, like I'm just like so tired now after doing that. That was great. That was really fun. But it's not over yet because we have to have the rematch with Escape from Yavin 4, which is the hardest run out of all of these. <laughs> yes, in our latest edition of the Mercy Kill Redemption oh, arc, there was one hidden in on this episode, and it is Escape from Yavin 4. And it was very close last year, but Muffin barely lost to the timer. So we're going to see after this next wellness break if Muffin can go the legendary three for three. It doesn't happen often here on Mercy Kill, but I'm excited to see if it can be pulled off. But really quickly, before we head off on our wellness break, do remember that your subs, gift subs, 
Prime Gaming subs and bits help support our weekly hotfix content. Please consider supporting our daily content if you enjoy these hotfix shows. Games Done Quick Highlights is a channel that features highlights of our GDQ hotfix shows. Use the exclamation point highlights command to learn more about our highlights. And again, plenty more coming up tonight from our wonderful runner, Covert underscore Muffin. Please, again, please give Covert Muffin a follow. Just fantastic runner. And as you can see, fantastic commentary as well. Absolutely oh, enjoyed you. it. So, everybody, be sure to stretch, hydrate, and we'll be right back with Mercy Kill. Right? Welcome back to Mercy Kill. I am joined here <laughs> by the wonderful Covert underscore Muffet. And this is Escape from Yavin 4, the real enemy and the reason why I was so enthusiastic about bringing this back. I love me a good redemption arc episode. And I'll tell you something. This one was very close last year. And I'm really hoping that Muffin can get the redemption that has been long sought now for exactly one year. So how do you feel about this muffin that's a great question i'm i am equal parts terrified but also i'm just i'm playing very well today like it's it's like i haven't played any of these games within the last six if not 12 months like this mm -hmm. last time i played this game was the last time i was on mercy kill so like it but i'm just it just so happens that my strafe jumping is is pretty good i'm nailing a lot of these incredibly precise and difficult sequence breaks first try uh, so if there is a time to be able to transfer those skills and prowess to a game, it's this one, because a lot of the most precise tricks are prevalent in this game in multiple places. Uh, so I'm very excited to showcase it off again. But at the same time, this one is definitely personal for me. I'm taking this game down. Now, I do believe this is the same estimate as last year. For Or did you add more onto this? I, I remember added, we talked. Okay. One How minute. Much? One minute. One okay. minute. Because uh, the last time I, I did this and I lost, I was like 30 seconds away from finishing. So if I ran about the same as I did uh, the last time, uh, which, which was fine, I got messed up by a bit of RNG near the end of the run in two places. Uh, but if I'm playing just as well as I was then, then we should almost certainly be able to finish under estimate this time. Absolutely. I'm really excited to see if you can get this redemption, Muffin. Are you ready to go? I am. Uh, so a bit of an introduction for Escape from Yavin for the Lost Maps. Uh, this is a fan-made mod. This was not released by Raven Software. It uses the same game base and engine as Jedi Knight Academy with some additional modifications worked in. So we're going to be running any percent no VRGI. Once again, VRGI stands for Velocity Reduction on Ground Impact, which is a normal physics uh, condition within Academy that says when you do not jump from higher to lower ground, so if you jump from lower to higher ground or from same elevation to same elevation of ground, you lose 50% of your velocity instantaneously. We have that turned off uh, for this run because it makes the run more interesting. Um, but that being said, um, we are going to go ahead and get started here with a countdown, starting in three, two, one and a half, one, half of a second. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and go. I'm sorry, Richard. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Good luck and have fun, Muffin. Thank you. Okay, so coming into Escape from Yavin 4, we actually just picked up a lightsaber, which is a new modded functionality within the run. That is the first and last time we want to do that within the run. Killing that enemy is really good. It's going to cut down on a little bit of RNG. And then there, we are going to be grabbing that Wookiee Bowcaster. Then here, uh, we're going to backslant, which allows us to animation clip, sticking our hitbox a little bit further into that wall there. Um, allowing us to uh, skip having to activate that switch. Then here we're going to switch our fighting style three times as we select our lightsaber, uh, which is going to unlock all of the, oh no, whoops, 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 I messed up. Uh, unlock all of the lightsaber styles for the rest of the run. Here, I, it's very important I'm going to enter this cutscene, which is going to stop some enemies from spawning in at the very start of the level so I can get through. Um, so now that you can see there are uh, much fewer enemies. And then here I'm just going to take a slow fall for a little bit of marathon safety and then grab a weapon for uh, the same regard. So this level and the early game levels are the scariest portion of this run. And then the end uh, missions are as well. Uh, so here, force pulling that Tuscan Raider in order to get through, then using our lightsaber uh, to break that wall, we are going to be force healing in order to make sure that we are on a high amount of health. And this is very critical for this speed game in general, because in this speed game, there are too many enemies. 
There are way too many enemies. All right, I'm just gonna start with that. But here is a very, very precise trick, which is going to be another moon wheel, um, which there will be uh, two moon wheels. So here, standing underneath the zeroth coordinate and then jumping from higher to slightly lower ground and then quick saving and quick loading the game at a very precise timing press as well is going to allow me um, to launch myself towards that zeroth coordinate. That was very close. That was a small moon wheel, so we didn't quite get the acceleration we're looking for. Nope, not quite. This trick literally might take me a minute or two to get once, because uh, it is that difficult and that precise. Um, but here's a standing in a very specific spot. Okay, that's quick save felt good, but it was not in a good spot by the looks of it. Okay, let's try again. Okay, that was a good quick save. Another smaller moon wheel. Okay, these are all very close from triggering off. There is some like finicky nature to moon wheel where sometimes it just works, sometimes it doesn't. So if the game's just like feeling off, then this would just be a reset point uh, for like PB attempts and the likes. But doing this does save a significant amount of time. So I absolutely will be going for it. And there we go, there we go. So getting moon wheel is going to allow us to jump up here. Oh, okay. And then almost fall all the way back down. And now we are going to be jumping through. So here, my goal is to continue this jump chain all the way through this section. So, oh no, okay. So there I actually ended up messing it up. So I'm going to set up for a backup chain. So here we're going to jump one, two, three, and then do a jump cancel there and another jump cancel there in order to make it over. Then I'm just going to wait for some force here and then force pull this enemy over. Then uh, pulling this enemy up while I'm in the middle of the air is going to actually pull me up uh, skipping f from me having to do like a cavern puzzle. Uh, having a little bit of trouble here because the speed of force pull is actually greatly accelerated in this mod. Uh, okay, almost. Nope, have to be slightly over his head. He's a little bit further than he normally is for me. Almost. So here also I want to be falling downwards as I force pull him up to me. There we go, there we go. Uh, and then uh, quick saving and quick loading and buffering my jump input allows me to get up up here, uh, sequence breaking a nice section of the mission. Then shooting this floor is going to uh, destroy it, which is required for the mission. And then here I'm going to shoot that shotgun trooper because he can majorly troll me. Then coming in here for some additional safety, I'm going to be killing a list of enemies. So those two are, are the important ones but I will also kill this guy because I have been trolled. The reason why I'm doing this is we're going to end up setting up for a sequence break that those NPCs can just completely ruin for me. Okay, my force is good. So we're gonna save, jump, force speed, do an alternate fire rocket. Nope, didn't get through the door. Nope. Okay, that should work. And my goal is to get through here. Ah, just barely too slow. So here, if I'm able to move fast enough uh, through this area. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm able to get out before that rock forms and that saves something like 10 plus minutes for the mission itself. So it absolutely is one of the largest sequence breaks in the entire run. Uh, but here I'm a little bit low on force. So I'm going to just wait for a sec and then do a jump chain over here and then shoot this guy before he chunks me down because shotgun troopers for what, oh, oh, whoops. Shotgun troopers for whatever reason have some of the highest accuracy in the game. Uh, then coming over here, I'm gonna kill this guy and grab his weapon for a little bit later and continue to progress on downwards. So here I am going to use force heal again as I'm just falling down these ramps. I'm gonna pick up these thermal detonators which are going to save a nice chunk of time and a bit of a later mission. But here we're going to activate, uh, we're gonna grab the boss saber again, just because it's the nicest single saber that we have access to. Oh no, I did again. Uh, one of the uh, nicest sabers for lightsaber on lightsaber combat. So here I wanna enter this cutscene again to stop myself from being attacked by a Rancor and a number of enemies as I start off the mission. That will literally spawn in after the cutscene is over. And then here I wanna make sure that I maintain my force very, very specifically. I want to try and jump just barely enough uh, in each of those spots. And then doing another animation clip here, we can actually end up hitting the switch from the other side. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so you heard a little snippet of it, but that was uh, Rosh Pennon. And so this mission itself has uh, fan-made uh, commentary uh, for the uh, dialogue options. I'm actually just going to peek and make sure. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure that that thing was uh, fuming, which is going to be important uh, for getting out of the mission. 
Then progressing up here, we're going to do some pretty precise jumps. Yep. So that one, I accidentally just hit some instant kill fire. There we go. I jumped around it that time and oh, I fell down. Okay, this is fine. Uh, that is a nice quick save. I'm just going to play this nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just get through the mission. Okay. And then, whoops, bonked my head there. So here is going to be another shotgun trooper as I try and land on a teeny tiny little platform there. There we go. Now I'm just going to kill for his weapon and a little bit of safety. And then here for a bit of marathon safety, I am going to potentially kill that guy. We missed, so we are going to say screw safety and go for this Stuker trooper. Um, okay. All right, so there I failed uh, killing that Stuker trooper, so I took a huge chunk of damage. So for literal safety in this game, I am going to be going all the way back up to full health. I cannot express how important it is to have very high health in a lot of these segments. Um, if I do not have high health, then um, all of these enemies here with these force powers can just insta-kill me pretty much. Oh, this guy came in. Okay. He... Oh, he never does this! What are you doing? All right, screw it. Okay, I'm just gonna let him just kind of chill over there and hope he doesn't get in my way. So here, after uh, destroying that last one, it will open the door to the end of the mission. And then uh, grabbing a bunch of ammo for safety, topping off my shields, and we are going to quickly progress into the next mission. Probably one of the hardest missions in the in entire run. Definitely one of the longest. So in this mission in particular, um, we are going to be reintroduced to the bikes. So if you really enjoyed that brief amount of vehicles that we get in Academy, well, we get an entire level that's going to be based around them. Uh, so there, I messed up my jump chain, so we're going to go for a little bit of safety here. Uh, so my goal is not to lose any health there. Okay, nice. Nice, 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 nice. So here, as I go through, there's going to be a slew of enemies on these bikes. And each bike, if it ends up hitting Jaden, um, our character that we are playing, it can end up one-shotting them, even if I am full on 100 health, 100 armor. Because bikes can deal over 200 damage. Then coming down here, we're going to hope to get one of the black speeder bikes. Uh, so let's peek behind us. Yeah, 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 we're good. Okay. So funny thing is when we push off an enemy, oh, off these bikes, uh, as long as they are not standing next to the bikes themselves, they will never get back onto the bikes. So that is a nice little, like them giving up um, all hope just simply because um, they couldn't get back on the bike for whatever reason. <laughs> Uh, so here on this bike, I'm going to move over to the left and then push him as the bike is slanted. And this is in order to preset my uh, departure angle on this bike. Then by, oh, that bike might be in the way. Then by doing a side jaunt feature here, we are going to jump up nice and get up here very, very quickly. And this is going to allow us to grab another key because the entire point of this mission is that we need to activate four consoles in order, where is it? There it is, okay. Uh, in order to uh, open up the ending of the mission itself. So there, that was that was pretty good, that was pretty good. Uh, so here these black bikes are important uh, compared to the colored speeder bikes because they actually end up having a shorter cooldown on um, that, their uh, speed boost feature. So it allows us to boost um, usually once more so if, if we would normally only get two boosts, which is very good. But here, just once again, as I'm jumping through, I'm going to be healing, letting go of all movement keys uh, to allow myself to just kind of like float through the air while I'm healing. I cannot stress enough how important it, it's going to be in this game to just have incredibly, incredibly high health as I go through. Oh, it's only three panels, excuse me. Um, so there, that was uh, the first panel that we got using a key that we ended up sequence breaking for. But here, uh, we are going to be embracing uh, Nicolas Cage and doing a trick that I discovered and I named uh, Stealing the Declaration of Independence. Uh, so the reason why it's named this is because the, wow, well, I got a first try. The original trick name in Jedi Knight Academy is called the Nicky Cage. So building a bunch of speed, this is fine, this is fine, this works. Uh, building a bunch of speed with the bike allows me to uh, be able to use a side jaunt feature in order to uh, build a bunch of speed and then tilting at an angle to build a bunch of height. So there, going on top of the level in a very specific angle allows me to actually end up, um, how do I say, 
stopping some enemies from spawning. So it's going to majorly cut down on the number of enemies that I'm going to have to deal with with the last portion of the mission, which is going to be uh, the difficult one. So here I'm just going to end up pulling these enemies so that they're not in my way uh, when I come back here, because this is actually the end of the mission. Oh, weird. I, I don't know where those enemies are. Okay, so normally there's two enemies that follow me there, but they're not there for whatever reason. That's totally okay. That's totally okay. Um, so now uh, that we have uh, gotten that last key, we now have to backtrack to close to the start of the mission. Um, uh, I am out of fuel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset up here. Uh, and this is actually important. What this is going to do is stick me into this little... Uh... <laughs> it's the bike. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's so funny. Uh, it's going to allow me to actually trap a number of those speeder bike pe people because force push ends up costing force. And so I have just barely enough force to be able to um, get through on each each portion. Oh no, the game soft locked. Okay, it's okay. I do have a backup save uh, prepared. So this is the most unstable level in the entire mod itself, um, which is which is okay. This is totally okay. Um, I'm not surprised that happened. Well, we'll use one of my GDQ backup saves that I used. Cool. Uh, so what just happened there is, well, I actually don't know. I think it might be too many entities are loaded into the level causing a memory dump issue, causing the game to crash, but I am not entirely sure myself. So all I did there was um, sequence break, activating a switch, and then coming over here to the very end of the mission again. But basically we left this bike here um, because now there is a final boss. But because the bike deals over 200 damage, hitting that boss twice with the bike that we left there intentionally ends up killing the boss instantaneously. <laughs> but yeah, just to stress, um, I literally skipped maybe five, 10 seconds into the future by doing that backup save, which was the amount of time it took me to just like end up reloading the, the level from my safety save itself. Um, but that's totally okay, that's totally okay. Um, that was not that was not my fault. That is just an unsolved instability within the game. <laughs> All right. So now coming into this mission, we're not quite done with bikes yet. There's still going to be a couple of additional missions where uh, we will end up seeing those speeder speeder bikes come into play. But here I'm just going to recharge uh, my armor for once again, a little bit of safety. And then that happens. Whoops. OK, so we're just going to do this for a little bit, then open the door then heal up the armor. And this is going to be incredibly useful. Um, there are very few levels where we actually fully refill our health and armor. So it's going to be important that I manage my health between missions really, really precisely. So here I'm going to go for a bit of an AI manipulation. I'm actually just going to speed boost into the corner and I missed it. Um, so that's OK. Oh, no, it's not. Where's the last one? OK, he's gone. So there, I'm just going to push the bike out of the way. All right, all right, we're good, we're good. Then coming through here with a nice little strafe jump chain, we are going to press the switch, which is going to unlock the end of the mission. However, we don't actually necessarily need to go to the end mission in the normal way. What I can do is I can do another incredibly precise side jump feature here. Nope. 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 I'm lagging. Lagging. Hang on, I'm just going to wait, wait for the quick load lag to to dissipate and I'll quick save the game again. Sorry, this one's very tight. Almost, almost. There we go, okay. Yeah, here we go. Nope. I'll go for this jump chain a couple of times. No, nope, that's not good enough. All right, so I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna fall like this, and then we're gonna jump around like this in order to take this bridge. So there I could land on a very tiny uh, little rock, but here I can just use the, the bridge instead in order to get to the end of the mission anyway. That's totally okay. It is a very, very difficult and precise trick. Uh, okay. So now moving on into the next mission itself, uh, it's really gonna start to showcase off uh, what type of a speed game that uh, Escape from Yavin 4 is especially. So coming into this area, we are going to be maintaining our force by 
trying to keep that force number as high as possible, and then coming into this area. And all of these enemies here can use force powers. They have lightsabers, which can, which can like, one or two shot me. They have force powers, so they can use things like force lightning three and force grip in order to stop me in my tracks. They could force pull me into another enemy that is going to use a force power or lightsaber attack to destroy me. Um, yep, there we go, right? And so it's very important that I end up trying to move as quickly and concisely through these areas, right? There, because I got boxed out by a little bit of the terrain, I was not moving through as fast as possible in that area. And so it gave that enemy a bit of time to be able to get in my way, right? Just like that guy, that guy just got in my way. Uh, making getting landing on that sill to do this sequence break a lot more difficult. Okay, nice, but this is just the story of Escape from Yavin 4. There, you're going to see, especially in some of the later levels, just the unreal amount of enemies that are going to be trying to get in my way. And it's one of the reasons why doing this game in particular for, like, marathons is one of the most terrifying things. Yeah, that guy just used Force Lightning, so I could no longer use Force Jump, right? Just all of these enemies can do very trolly things. But upcoming here, just once again, a little bit of event safety, just making sure that I am on high health. Then doing a very specific jump sequence here, which I missed, causing me to take over 130 damage. There we go, I got it that time. Uh, by crouching through those trip wires. That guy trying to use force lightning on me through the wall can be very, very spooky. This enemy here can one-shot me if I'm not fast enough. Okay, whoops. Oh, I accidentally fell there. Okay, and we're through. Okay, in this upcoming area, this is probably one of the bigger portions of RNG in the run itself. I'm going to run past this first enemy and these two enemies as well, because I only need to kill um, four enemies in total. Wow, that was really good RNG. Okay, so what I did there was I destroyed a glass floor, and uh, with good RNG, that, what the enemies will actually end up doing is just running into the hole and dying. <laughs> but some of the enemies, what they can uh, end up doing is uh, like doing like taunt animations and stuff, causing them to not end up falling into the hole immediately. But here we're going to enter a cutscene, and as I mentioned in Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, enemies can attack, they can move around in cutscenes. So if I didn't kill those enemies uh, before entering the cutscene, they can end up like removing one to 200 uh, amount of health. Which is very scary as I fall down. Why am I in first person? Okay, here we go. Okay, good, I hit the switch. All right, I wasn't sure if I hit that switch or not. Okay, okay, good. All right, so upcoming here, we're going to do a cute little sequence break. I'm just gonna quick save uh, the game here. So there are these trip mines here, but I don't actually need to activate them. Instead, if I just jump and then shoot the flechette alternate fire, he'll just end up force pushing the projectiles away, including me with it. Ooh, that was scary. Okay, so it's gonna be important coming into this next mission that I am on over 70 health. I need at least 70 health. So what we're gonna do is go hide in this corner, heal up to about 90 something, and then open up the end of the mission and progress through. Okay, so the reason why I need so much health on this mission is that there's going to be a lot of enemies that can kill me. And I know it's something that I'm saying a lot, but it's true. So here, what I'm trying to do is trying to do a jump sequence here by fitting into a teeny tiny little hole uh, using force jump. Oh, I'm just barely off each, each of these attempts. Oh, yep, he force pulled me, stopping my jump chain, right? Okay, there we go, there we go. So I'm just gonna heal for a little bit because I messed up the follow-up movement. And then pull out the rocket launcher. And then fire a bunch of rockets in there. Oh! Okay, that guy was still alive. All right, so I'm gonna grab the flechette for a little bit of safety. Okay, cool, okay, so we're through that part. And so if I wanted to, there is uh, some safety health right here. So I am going to grab it just for, once again, safety, safety, safety. It's I cannot stress how incredibly important it is in a mission that is as difficult as this, as well as like just the entire run. This You're going to see me say a lot of those things. Uh, but it's amazing, like when, when the, a run of this speed game is done at a high level of play, right? It's like skipping all of these safety healths is is big time save, because that time does really, really add up. Um, but for the sake of the event itself, I do want to try and get underestimate. So they're uh, utilizing force pull. I missed my timing on that, so he's able to resist it. And then I'm going to use um, the heavy repeater to break these bars. Uh, whoops. 
Then jumping up here, we are going to come into this mission, and the hope is that most of these guys are actually going to be force users. The Jawas have a 50% chance of either having DEMP guns or by having a dual-bladed lightsaber and force powers. As I struggle a little bit with this movement, no problem. We're gonna pull out the lightsaber here and wait because I do not have enough force to continue with the mission. Okay, there we go. It should be enough. Okay, great. So grabbing that security key as well, we're just gonna enter this cutscene and then guess what? You guessed correctly if you said safety healing. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay, good. So coming up here is gonna be one of the tighter sequence breaks, I wanna say, in the run itself. I am going to be uh, avoiding an insta-kill death plane. So here, I'm just going to run into the plane to show you. Yeah, so it's like a flat plane. So the goal is to be just barely underneath it. Um, and then using, uh, and then having enough speed and height to be able to just... Oh, I'm going to hit it. Okay, okay, backup time. Nope, I still hit it. <laughs> okay, here we go again. Oh, yes, okay. Nope, wrong weapon. There we go. <laughs> he just killed me while I was in the cutscene. Oh no. Oh, welcome to Escape from Yavin 4. Nope, that was not enough of a jump distance. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, we got it that time. Uh, six, alt attack. Save the game after pulling the lightsaber out. Hit the switch, fall down, fall down. Lightsaber, roll to mitigate some of the fall damage. Kill this guy for his security key. And then, oh, don't die to him. Hit panel one, hit panel two. And all of these tiny little cutscenes that are playing, the enemies are able to move around in each and every single one of them. <laughs> all right, we made it. We got through the mission. Um, oh yeah, okay, so this is really cool. So the mod devs themselves, realizing there was a lot of instability within the mod itself, a lot of which ended up getting patched out, major shout outs to Sphere MJ. They added in this chapters menu so that I can actually end up um, just going to the mission itself without having to continue. If I hadn't done this, it would have been stuck permanently into that loading screen. Um, so major shout outs uh, to the devs themselves. Very, very clever deployment uh, of, of the mod itself in this way. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned also, major shout outs to Sphere MJ. Uh, he has done a lot of work for the Jedi Knight, um, Outcast, the Jedi Knight Academy, and for the Escape from Yavin 4 uh, communities. Just making these homebrew patches to really increase uh, the stability as well as patch the games itself. So thank you, Sphere, for all the work you've done. Cool. Okay, so coming into this mission, we are going to be coming up to a, our next big sequence break as I kill some enemies here, okay? Which is going to require a very, very precise setup. And then using the Saber Kata to be able to, nice, activate that switch through that door. Getting that first try is incredibly, incredibly hype. That is an unbelievably precise trick. And what that ended up doing was opening this door here to allow me to destroy these bombs, which is going to open up the end of the mission. And here's a small cutscene. Now I'm gonna fall down, jump up here, uh, jump, whoops, over here, and come into this room. And then push. Oh, no, I meant to attack that little grating. That's okay, though. Gives me a little bit of stuker ammo for safety. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, so that animation clip there allows us to skip like the grand majority of the mission, which is really, really cool. Um, and as I mentioned, it's very precise trick. But now, this is one of the few portions that I've had all night for a little bit of downtime. So Sky, if there is any sort of questions in chat, or if you have a question, just feel free to ask. Well, the first thing I want to say is I think we're about 21 minutes away left in the run, so I okay. hope you feel like things are going pretty well. I feel like they are overall. Yeah, they're okay. Um, they're okay. <laughs> second of all, uh, my personal question to you, because, you know, it is Star Wars Day as of this recording. Sure. Uh, what do you have a favorite Star Wars or or which Star Wars have you seen in the movies? Now, I apologize if this dates you and possibly me a little bit, but I'm curious. Uh, no. So as as a kid, I watched the original trilogy, but I definitely have like very fond memories growing up of like watching the uh, original trilogy. But the, the prequels were something that I was able to watch and enjoy as a kid and I do have very fond memories. I know they're those are kind of joked on as being very, very silly in general, but I, I definitely enjoyed them as as a kid growing up. 
Were you able to watch the uh, remix of the original series, uh, the original oh, saga, no. when you went to the movies? Because no, I was I a kid those. and I saw A New Hope in the movie theaters, like the remake. Oh, not, that's so not cool. Not the first go. I'm, they did a remake in the 90s and I saw them as a kid in the theaters and it was really <laughs> That is so, so cool. Um, okay, so I'm coming here. This is going to be another incredibly large sequence break for the run itself. Uh, so in here uh, is one of the funniest missions in the entire run because it has so much homebrew dialogue from Rosh. But here I'm going to set up for an unbelievably precise moon wheel and to do a very, very tight sequence Katie. of jumps. What are you yeah, wow, first try. Okay, let's go, dude. Okay, it's not over yet. Jump once, jump twice, double stuker shot, and we got up there. Oh man, that is so big. Getting that first try is unbelievably difficult and very, very, very important. Um, that's a big, big hurdle for me to, to get over, especially when I haven't like played this at all uh, in recent times. Uh, I cannot express how relieved I am from nailing that sequence break. Uh, so there, uh, that sequence break as well uh, saves like 10, 15, 20 minutes or so in the run itself. Dang, I'm just a little bit slow here. So we're just going to... Oh, jeez. Now I'm doubting myself. Okay, just land on the propeller, run to the outside, and jump. Okay, cool. Whew. Um, but that definitely is like a run killer skip for sure in, in the run overall. Uh, but here I'm going to jump whoops into that propeller and go a little bit further than I wanted to. Uh, and then we are going to move through this mission. So a really cool thing in this mission, as I mentioned in Outcast especially, is that enemies usually take about half of a second before they start acting. So if I'm able to just move through really concisely, as we are going to just pull this guy out of the way, then I can get through these sections before they can become troublesome. Yeah, beautiful. That was a great section. There's a lot of trolling that those enemies can do, but all because I had really concise and just like direct movement, I was able to get through that section, making it look incredibly easy. Uh, I cannot express how many things can just go wrong from every single angle and degree. Uh, but upcoming here, we're going to kill this guy so we can get access to the switch a little bit easier and then going to be jumping through. My health is in a really good spot here. So here, breaking this floor, turning to the right, breaking that panel, and then coming through for this panel. I do have really good health here, so I'm going to risk uh, this. Yeah, that guy behaved. And then jumping on this, and then jumping over here, we are going to come into another really, really cool sequence break. So normally you have to like fight multiple waves of enemies in this area, but just simply standing in this spot, jumping and crouching into a very specific timing into the ceiling. There we go. There we go. I am able um, to skip having to fight that entire arena because the end trigger is just peeking very, very um, barely below that ceiling, allowing me to get up. The bad news from that is that I am now very low on force. And this, this uh, level in particular requires me to have a high amount of force. So I'm actually just going to wait here, literally, until I get a little bit more force. And then I will take this fight here on this enemy, press this panel, which is going to open up the next area. And we are going to go through with some very, very difficult sequence breaks here. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, this is so tight. This is so hard. Okay, almost. Okay, I feel like I have a different setup here. Nope, that was almost it. Nope, that was for swag. That was bad. I'm running into the console. Okay. Oh my goodness. This jump is very, very tight. Okay, there we go. There's the first jump. It's not over yet. There's going to be... Oh no, you fell down. Oh no. Okay. So quick save. Land on this thing and then land here with a roll. Okay, great. Okay. So it's important that I have a high amount of health there. Then we're going to pull out the Stuker concussion, concussion Rifle for a little bit of knockback here. I just barely missed that. Actually, I don't think I want the knockback there. So we just do a jump cancel there, and then we use a little bit of a knockback here. Use Force Protect to mitigate 80% of damage, and then use the Bowcaster to break these boxes uh, for our return visit. Yep, there was a nice little Force Pull there. Oh, yep, and this guy's boxing me out. This is exactly why I Force Protect on. And there, that guy just chewed through about 60 of 80 health that I had. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, let's save. So it's not over yet. Oh, yep, there is Force Lightning, and that guy just killed me. <laughs> so now we are going to be jumping down. Please don't kill me. Okay, we're fine. 
Okay, jumping up and then taking out this enemy. I don't think I have enough force to actually end the mission. I think I need just about 40 health to, to go very, very fast. And then here I'm just going to force push that rocket back in, kill him to grab his rocket launcher, which I didn't need because I was full on rockets, and then taking 39 fall damage there from that section, allowing me to come into this next part and into the next mission. Nice thing about this next mission, fully refills my health and energy. Boom. <laughs> so that is going to be very, very nice. So it's totally okay that I ended up um, taking a lot of damage there. Then coming through this section, we are going to pull out the Suker, enter this cutscene, and then jump down and go for a uh, very difficult, uh, it's not very difficult, it's pretty tough. Jump chain here. Okay, and here's a really cool sequence break, which I wish I could talk about it, but basically there I threw my lightsaber deactivate at a very specific time to allow for the hilt to bounce into the end of mission trigger objective. Uh, so I just sequence broke the entire mission by, me, by being able to bounce my hilt off of the ground into a destructible object. So getting that first try is very, very good. That is a pretty precise trick. Then here is going to be like the final bike trick of, uh, of, the, of the run, where I'm going to do another side jaunt feature, and then, oh, that was so close. Uh, 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 that, was, that was good, that was actually, that worked. That probably would have worked. Uh, I just need to believe, I need to believe in myself. Okay, I believe in myself. Yep, good. Okay, great. Then uh, over here, there's going to be a bunch of instant kill death triggers, which I'm going to be jumping over and then just barely missing that TIE Fighter and missing the ground here. Oh, yep, as I almost end up taking uh, some fall damage there. So just falling into the water allows me to mitigate uh, taking any fall damage there and and allow me to sequence break the entire mission. Then this level here, this is the scariest level of the entire run. Where I have said there are too many enemies, this this level has too many enemies, but even if you removed half of the enemies on this level, it would still have, you guessed it, oh no, too many enemies. Uh, but here, I actually wrote out a sticky note um, that has a puzzle combination for where I'm supposed to go. Um, so here, we are going to be coming into a cool little switch puzzle in the game. Um, which is awesome at, for a casual uh, playthrough. But first, we are going to do a really cool glitch. So punching, using Force Rage, and then activating Force uh, Lightning is going to allow me to be able to clip through that. And then using Force Lightning, it will actually end up breaking the bo explosive box on the other side. Sequence breaking like one puzzle or so. One puzzle or so. Oh, oh, yeah, these fours can be really finicky to grab on, but there we go. So here is going to be push, and then next is going to be forward left. Okay, so I go right here. So I, I face this wall, and then I come back here. I'm gonna quick save, and I jump up, um, and we go through here to hit this switch, boop, which is gonna open that door. And then we go um, forward center again. Okay. Uh, so back to this one, because we just opened a door here. Sorry, I'm just like focusing to try and not mess this up because I always get really, really lost here. Then walking forward in, in order to activate a trigger to allow for that box to be interactable allows me to open up um, the end. And now the level is really gonna, gonna like pop off. So here, uh, oh, my lightsaber is glitched out. Okay, there we go. That's a little spooky. Oh God, please, please let me through. Yep, I'm dead. Oh, where is this? Uh-oh. Uh, okay, I got a little bamboozled there. Um, oh no, I have no idea what part of the puzzle this is in. Uh, okay, so the thing that I was worried about happening did end up happening. Uh, so I'm just literally gonna go through the majority of the puzzle sequence again. Okay, so that one I did push, so we go back to forward left. So I turn right here and then I go back and we jump up. That's okay, that's okay. Um, and that is, this is just like exactly what happens in Escape from Yavin 4. This is totally the flavor of the speed run. There I had a weird bug with my lightsaber, causing it to not come out, and then I just did not uh, handle that perfectly well. No problem whatsoever. Okay, so they're pulling the boxes once again. We are now going to come through this grating. Uh, if the game allows me to jump, yep, there we go. I'm gonna jump up, I'm gonna heal this time, pull out my saber, then swap, pull it back out, open this door, open this door, save the game. Okay, great. All right, here we go. Killing that shotgun guy, there we go, so he can't kill me later. So 
as I come through each of these sections, there are multiple enemies that have thermal detonators that have um, these uh, shotguns that have super concussion rifles, and they can each deal like 80 to 120 damage with a single attack. Uh, and I'm going to be backtracking through these sections multiple times. So with this, grabbing these security keys is going to allow me to come back, and um, each time I come back, it will s further spawn multiple enemies. And then enemies like that can end up trolling me, and now I am down to 20 health, 18 health, excuse me. Okay, so let's destroy this. So I just need to not get shot by this guy. Um, okay. Okay, we got it. Nope. Nope, I'm dead. Okay. Okay, we got the key. We're gonna save here. All right, so quick saving and quick loading is actually incredibly useful uh, for this mission in particular, because it's going to end up resetting enemies AI. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and force heal, which is very, very bad because it drains all of my force to do so. So I'm at the mercy of these guys use force powers on me. Yep, just like that. And in here, I have to kill off a list of five enemies in order to be able to uh, cause a door to open as I go down to two health. Okay, please die. Thank you. Uh, let's force heal again and go back to white style. Ooh, okay, that guy almost killed me. All right, we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. So now I just have to go through this death, doom, and dying room one more time. Oh, nope, that guy shot me, so I died instantly. <laughs> oh, yep, there we go again. Uh, maybe if I force push him over. Let's do that. Push. Hit. Grab this sucre for safety. We don't need it. Okay. Here's the final pass through this room. Okay, and we're in. We're in. We're out. All right, we're through. Wait, I need a security key? Did I not grab the security key? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I have to go back, dude. Okay. So what happened there is I just didn't walk on the guy's corpse enough to be able to grab the key because of this guy. There it is. Okay, there's the key. And now we try and go all the way back through this Doom catwalk. Okay, so save the game. We have the security key now. Oh God. All right. No, he used Force Lightning, canceling out my jump. All right, and through the door. Okay, and <laughs> all right, we did it. And now, uh, only two more little scary things here. This enemy control us, but they got locked, so we're good, and we're out of that mission. Oh boy, okay. It's not over yet. We're going to have a return of Jimmy the Rancor on this mission. How much time do I have left, out of curiosity? Let me take a look here to make sure I have the approximate time here. So uh, about eight minutes. Okay, I think yeah. I can do it. I think Actually, I can do it. Actually, now seven. Now seven as of this. Okay. Refresh. I'm pretty sure I can do it. All right. All right, so there we go. So we killed off a list of enemies there. Um, I am literally just going to heal up here uh, for, once again, a little bit of extra safety. Then uh, picking up this lightsaber and putting it down, you can see that I am able to go above my normal maximum force amount of 100. Uh, it will not regenerate all the way, oh, all the way back up uh, to, to that like 117 amount that I got. Oh, that's fine. I just fell down. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. So they're destroying that floor, and then I see where I'm at. I'm going to wait for about... Uh, oh, I have the wrong lightsaber. I have to fall all the way back down. Okay, that is a bit of time loss. This is important. I do need uh, this lightsaber um, for me. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. So we're going to jump back up here. We're going to wait for some force. And then we're going to jump up, kill this guy because he can get in the way, take out the Stuker concussion rifle, and start a very difficult jump chain because these floors are a lie. These floors are not actually here. And then using the Suker one more time, we can get up to the sledge with just barely enough uh, force. Come in, activate this switch by crawling through this little hole, which I'm pretty sure you are not supposed to be able to do. Ooh, that was a nice continuation. And then we are going to come into this area. So here is one of the scary sections of the mission. Yep, I just almost completely died there from uh, falling prone. Um, so here I need to kill off a list of enemies. The Samus Aran skins, um, uh, don't worry about it. I'm Disney uh, was definitely thinking of adding these in. Oh no, I said took a death. Uh, nice quick save though. Um, and this is going to unlock the next portion. Oh, that was a really good pull from that Samus. Uh, so the Samus Arans are our allies indeed. 
Okay, there we go. So we're gonna kill this guy here, switch to light style. Okay, that guy jumped through so we can pull out uh, the rocket launcher and then hit, hits, 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 pull this out. Okay, and then go through. And then fight off another list of enemies which are trolling me right now. Please die. Please die, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna heal up for safety. And then attack you. And attack you. Pull out the Suker, I have 100 ammo left. So I'm gonna hit, hit. And is that everyone? No, I missed one. Okay, and that should be everybody. So here, I am going to be intentionally pulling and pushing all of these. Nope, there's one left, there's one left. Okay, intentionally pulling out um, all of these enemies around here. And this is because we are now going to do one of the coolest sequence breaks in the entire run. So here, Jimmy the Rancor is going to come over and we're going to try and lure him into a very specific spot. Um, so here, as he just breaks this last wall, just for a little bit of safety, I am actually going to go ahead and save the game again. Just like this, save. Just in case. So Jimmy can get stuck on a number of things. Nope, really good. Oh, really good. Nope. Okay, yep, that's why I saved there. That is exactly why, okay. Come here, Jimmy. Okay, save, jump. Uh, that might work. So here, luring him to a specific spot, having him grabs us, and then dealing enough damage causes him to flinch back, pretty much just launching back and releasing us uh, through the door itself. <laughs> so that is a really cool sequence break. That's very, very cool. Okay, so we're coming into the final couple of levels in the run itself and uh, some of the most RNG intensive levels. The last one in particular, which was the reason why we ended up uh, not being able to uh, close out the run last, last year on Mercy Kill. Three minutes. Three minutes, okay. I think we have enough time. All it's right. definitely gonna be close, but here I'm going to try an action lock. Darth Maul, nope, bad. Uh, yeah, there we go, there we go. That was beautiful, beautiful. And doing that stops him um, from, uh, oh no, oh no, I messed up, dang. I tried to quick save, but I accidentally missed the key. Oh, now he's trolling me. Okay, that's good. All right, that works as well. No, and then he did a, a saber lock. Please die, yep, okay. Save, load. Deactivate force speed, nope. Okay, come on, there we go. All right, so now coming into the final mission, this mission can be brutal. Whoops, I just have to walk. Oh no, nope, Saber 1, basic. Yes, there we go. So here there's going to be a, a list of Jedi Masters that I have to end up uh, killing off, and they control me. So Force Protect mitigates 80% of all damage, um, but that was beautiful. Okay, that was a really good start. Nope, that guy got on my way, so I'm going to let them die and then uh, try and take out this guy. Don't use protect. Yep, okay. Now I'm gonna drop four speeds to be able to get some force back. Okay, here's Chewbacca. Don't worry about it, totally a Jedi Master. And there, yeah, there is Mace Window who ended up using force protect. Uh, these guys are getting in my way. Okay, there we go. So they're using force speed at a really particular time, allows me to basically uh, slow down my lightsaber but increase the proc rate. So now there's only one more Jedi Master left who is none other than Yoda. Oh yeah, he's being a little bit of a troll here. So I'm gonna quick save. Oh God, I'm getting trolled by Samus Aran. No, I don't like that. Who likes to jump around all the time and use force powers. One minute. Okay, yeah, we're fine, we're fine. Oh God, this is just not a good position for him to be in. Oh, I moved so fast too. Okay, there we go, we got him. All right, that's it, it's underestimate. That's it, we got it. We got it. When, when's time? Uh, when it completely fades to black. And... Okay. Time. 4527, your added minute did it. <laughs> good. <laughs> Good, wow, incredible. Yeah, we got trolled there on that on that last mission in particular. But yeah, that's awesome. Man, yes, I did it three for three, heck yeah. Now oh, the question is, 
If you come back next year, you're gonna go with your original estimate now? Was it really the minute? I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think I'm gonna have to watch back because it's so hard for me to not just like hyper focus in on like all the things that were going going wrong. I had to like, this is one of the really fun things and something me and Sky were talking about before the show is that this is an excellent mental exercise. Like at a very high level of the games, there's not as much spaghetti, right? Because you're well-practiced. But also we have planned out like every single jump and landing position, every single turn angle, every single force amount. And so like, but when I haven't been allowed to really play these games and practice up, right? that all goes out the window. And so it's a very difficult like improvisation fiesta where I have to really think on my feet and try and mitigate all of these like mistakes and errors and like what the game ends up throwing at me as we saw from Escape from Yavin 4. Um, but yeah, who knows? Maybe we will drop off that minute uh, next year. Well, I had a ton of fun watching this. Thank you so much for being on, Muffin. We really appreciate it. So a couple questions here as we close sure. out. Uh, do you have any last minute shout outs for us? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, there's so many people like the, the speed running communities for Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Knight Academy, Escape from Yavin 4 are all just amazing people. They're incredibly welcoming, incredibly hype and very talented at the game. Uh, but that being said, we have beginners tutorials for all of these that are geared towards people who've never speed run before. But maybe Major shout outs in particular to a few people in general. Hotshot Wire, especially for Escape from Yavin 4. He is the person besides me who has spent uh, a lot of work uh, finding things in this game, as well as uh, some con contributions from Dr. Meowington. Uh, major shout outs to Sajiki and Vrindar for Jedi Knight Academy and Jedi Knight Outcast, as well as Prasco, uh, Jaden Oem, Dr. Meowington, uh, Smash. It just, there's just way too many people to thank because the community is that amazing. Uh, so if you're interested in trying it out, go to speedrun.com slash JK2 in all lowercase or speedrun.com slash JKA for Jedi Knight Academy. Also, too, yeah. please be sure to give Covert Muffin oh, yeah. a follow. <laughs> and, yeah, you have to shout out yourself here, too. You're looking at everyone but yourself. That's not what a Sith Lord would do. Come on, now. Uh, that is twitch.tv slash Covert underscore Muffin. Please be sure to give Covert Muffin a follow. One last question. I always ask this. Uh, would you recommend the Mercy Kill experience to runners? Oh, oh yeah. This is absolutely one of my favorite Hotfix shows that I've been a part of. Uh, I like setting competitive estimates for myself. As you saw, most of the runs were within a minute <laughs> of like me finishing under estimate. So I try and set those really tight estimates. Um, but it's it's very different for speedrunners to try and perform at a video game without being allowed to practice. Usually performances in marathon runs, you see people having done hundreds if not thousands of hours of practice throughout the years in order to be able to bring that high level of gameplay. But this, no, it's a spaghetti fiesta and it's a very, very fun experience. So yes, I would absolutely suggest this to pretty much any speedrunner. All right, awesome. Again, one last final shout out and thank you to Covert Muffin for being here again. I'm gonna post the link one more time. Please be sure to give Covert Muffin a follow. All right, so our GDQ Hotfix programming is not over tonight. I do have a couple of announcements for tomorrow, though. Tomorrow we have the first step into speedrunning Aragami starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. After that, we have Metroid Dread on Victory Lap. So again, that is our programming for tomorrow. However, tonight's programming is not over with. Coming up next is never before seen. Take it away, Amber.